Good evening, dear students. Good evening to everyone. Very good evening to all of you. Welcome to Get Through Questions. Hope you are uh, busy you now with your preparation, right? <coughs> now. friends i am dr vinod i am here to discuss uh, some of the important questions which can be expected in gate examination important concepts important questions uh, which can be expected in gate examination we are going to discuss i am going to discuss some of the topics in production stream that includes casting welding and forming in these three areas i am going to discuss some concepts and important questions which can be expected in gate examination so we are going to discuss the concept uh, through the questions we will discuss this uh, no, you know the questions and some concepts with respect to the questions okay now i'm going to solve some questions friends uh, so parallel you can also try and give some answers right uh, so that uh, you can uh, through live chat you can give some answers if you have any difficulty you can give so that we can have no the interaction type of session we are going to continue okay so without much wasting of your time i am going to start the session with the casting okay all right now we will start with uh, friends the questions related to casting we will start with the first one can you please look at the question once can you please uh, look at the question read the question carefully friends so gate examination very very important point you have to remember is first we have you have to read the question first try to digest the question first that's very very important right so please read the question thoroughly and try to understand the question first okay so the first question is like this friends which of the following material require large size pattern if we want to prepare a casting we required a pattern on the pattern we are adding allowances so due to addition of allowances size of the pattern will be getting what increased so which will be having a large size pattern means uh, to prepare which type of material right size of the pattern will be more so if i am adding allowances on the pattern depending on the property of the material which type of allowance will depends on shrinkage allowance shrinkage allowance will depends on property of the material okay so indirectly which metal is having a large size shrinkage because if the metal is having a large size shrinkage to compensate that if i am adding shrinkage allowance on the pattern size of the pattern will be getting what increased size of the pattern will be getting what increased so indirectly the question is which of the material which of this following metal is having a large size solid shrinkage solid shrinkage because while preparing of the pattern which type of shrinkage allowance we are adding on the pattern solid shrinkage we are going to add so which material out of this material which metal is having large size shrinkage large size uh, we can say large solid shrinkage will be there which type of mate which material is having large size uh, shrinkage friends that is uh, to be specific i can say it is a solid shrinkage we can consider it is a solid shrinkage we can consider so if you look at uh, the aluminum friends if you look at aluminum the solid shrinkage is 13 mm per meter length so there is no need to remember this values because whenever the problem is given friends this values will be given with respect to numericals but here which metal is having more shrinkage which metal is having less shrinkage if you able to identify then the problem is uh, easy so for understanding of easy for i am writing here aluminum is having 13 mm per meter length of shrinkage cast iron is having the shrinkage of 10 mm per meter length this is a solid shrinkage solid shrinkage will be always added for linear dimensions right 10 mm per meter length we are expressing in terms of linear dimensions mm per meter length so cast iron 10 mm next one is uh, steel if you can stare steel is having 
ट्वेंटी एम एम पर मीटर लेंथ ट्वेंटी एम एम पर मीटर लेंथ देन इफ यू कंसिडर द ब्रास ब्रास इज हैविंग फिफ्टीन एम एम पर मीटर लेंथ फिफ्टीन एम एम पर मीटर लेंथ लाइक दिस वी हैव डिफरेंट वैल्यूज फॉर डिफरेंट मेटीरियल दिस इज अबाउट सॉलिड स्रिंकेज वैल्यूज विच विल बी एडेड ऑन द पैटर्न ठीक है नाउ आउट ऑफ ऑल दिस वैल्यूज विच विल बी हैविंग मोर स्रिंकेज 20 mm per meter length steel is having more shrinkage right so out of this material friends i can say steel is uh, having maximum shrinkage if i'm adding maximum i uh, know uh, shrinkage elements on the pattern size of the pattern will be more for which material steel material size of the pattern will be more out of this material friends out of this four options which material is having large size pattern steel is having large size pattern okay so this is the concept you can do. so with respect to this concept friends i like to add another two points you can look at friends if you look at the cooling curve cooling curve this is for pure metal i am talking friends pure metal the cooling curve is like this i am going to fill the liquid metal into the cavity at pouring temperature this diagram will be with respect to temperature versus time graph i am going to fill the liquid metal into the cavity at pouring temperature we are cooling the liquid metal from pouring temperature to freezing or melting temperature both will be same for pure metal melting and we can say freezing temperature both will be same so from here to here i can say if uh, if i look at friends here this is a a and this is a b a to b is what liquid state b to c liquid metal will start solidification at point b and it will ends solidification at point c b to c is a phase transformation state A to B is what liquid state. At point C, liquid is converted into solid form. We are cooling the solid casting from C to D. That is freezing to ambient temperature. We are cooling. Freezing to ambient temperature. We are cooling the solid casting C to D. So A to B in liquid state, the amount of shrinkage is called liquid shrinkage. A to B, the amount of shrinkage in liquid state is called liquid shrinkage. during phase transformation this shrinkage is known as solidification shrinkage solidification shrinkage after converting into solid form at point c if i am cooling the solid casting in solid state from freezing to ambient temperature the shrinkage is a solid shrinkage so totally three types of shrinkages will be there liquid shrinkage solidification shrinkage third one is solid shrinkage so solid shrinkage can be compensated by providing what shrinkage allowance on the pattern this liquid and solidification shrinkage both can be compensated by providing what riser both can be compensated by providing riser i am repeating can you please listen carefully a to b is liquid shrinkage b to c solidification shrinkage these two shrinkages can be compensated by providing riser riser will be acting as a reservoir of the molten liquid metal c to d is a solid shrinkage which can be compensated by providing shrinkage allowance on the pattern okay so these are the three types of shrinkages we can consider now with respect to this cooling curve we can have one more point also please look at friends here what is that solidification time so if i fill the metal into the cavity the time taken to convert liquid into solid form is called solidification time the time taken to convert liquid into solid form is called what solidification time so there are two solidification times you can observe from this particular uh, cooling curve what is that local solidification time second one is a total solidification time so what is the difference you can observe friends here what is the difference you can observe so if i you know start filling up this metal if i cool this metal from pouring to we can say freezing temperature at point b freezing temperature liquid metal will start solidification right so uh, strictly speaking strictly speaking the solidification time is local solidification time the time at which the, the liquid metal will start solidification and it will uh, end the solidification at point c b to c that time is called local solidification time strictly speaking this is exact uh, solidification time but if i fill the metal into the cavity it may be difficult to identify where exactly liquid metal will start solidification at which temperature at which time the liquid metal will start solidification it may be difficult to you know find that's why what we are finding total solidification we are going to calculate means if i fill the metal into the cavity 
if I fill the metal into the cavity, after complete filling up this metal into the cavity, then I will count for solidification time. At which temperature? Pouring temperature. By the time if I am filling the metal into the cavity, right? after complete filling up this metal into the cavity, then I will stop pouring up this metal into the cavity, then I will start counting up the time for solidification. Okay, so that time is called the total solidification time. That is from pouring temperature to you know, the freezing uh, uh, completion of the freezing time. If you consider this uh, time, we will consider as what total solidification time. So in problems also we are calculating friends uh, uh, solidification time. So nothing is mentioned means by default it is a total solidification time. So in problems they are mentioning it is a total solidification time. Even if they are not mentioning also whatever the time we are calculating is called solidification. That is total solidification time. So you can observe friends total solidification time, local solidification time. During phase transformation there is no temperature change. Temperature will remain constant for a pure metal. This is called thermal arrest. It is called thermal arrest. It is a cooling curve. I am repeating it is for pure metal. It is for pure metal you can consider okay so this is uh, with respect to shrinkage questions are coming with respect to this one friends from which temperature to which temperature it is liquid shrinkage which temperature to which temperature it is solid shrinkage this type of questions will be coming and one question already we have discussed with respect to pattern size okay na? this one then we move on to the next question please look at here with respect to right uh, most of them are uh, asking friends in uh, different uh, now test series uh, different uh, answers are given for this type of questions. So to clarify all your doubts, I have taken up this particular question. Now you can look at the question friends here. Grey cast iron block of size uh, 200, 110 mm with a central circular hole of diameter 5 mm is hand casted. The shrinkage allowance for the pattern is 2%. Uh, shrinkage allowance for the pattern means pattern making allowance, it is a solid shrinkage. Solid shrinkage will be always for linear dimensions unless otherwise mentioned. It is always for linear. Some problems specifically they will mention volumetric solid contraction. You can consider for volumetric. If nothing is mentioned, solid shrinkage will be always for linear. Okay? Right. Now the ratio of the volume of the pattern to the volume of the casting we have to find. So first we need to add some allowance, the shrinkage allowance on the pattern such that we will find volume of the pattern and volume of the casting that ratio we have to find okay na? but inside there is a please what happened a circular hole is there inside this particular casting that you have to observe a circular hole is there 5 mm diameter hole is there inside this particular casting that you can observe so you can look at closely friends here it is a slab casting it is a slab casting you can observe it is a slab casting having dimensions L B H dimensions as given ones here. So this is uh, 200, 100 and 10 mm you can consider height and the central hole is there throughout the thickness we have to consider this whole diameter he has given 5 mm is the diameter of this hole he has given. Five, and see this 5 mm all dimensions are in mm only diameter is uh, 5 mm it is throughout this uh, thickness, uh, the circular hole is there. So we need to find out what is the ratio of volume of the pattern to the volume of the casting. Okay, first one. Then second important point friends here, re with respect to grey cast iron. Most of them are getting the doubt with respect to grey cast iron. In grey cast iron, liquid and solidification state, there is a chance of expansion of the material. Liquid and solidification state expansion of the material that is a negative shrinkage. That is a negative shrinkage. But in solid state, in solid state there is a possibility of contraction of the material. In solid state there is a chance of contraction of the material. To overcome this, we need to add shrinkage allowance on the pattern. So regarding the calculation of the dimensions of the pattern, it is just similar to other materials. So difference in where? liquid and solidification state there is a chance of expansion of the material in case of grey cast iron okay this point that is called liquid and solidification state is negative shrinkage we will consider but solid shrinkage it is a positive only contraction will be taking place towards the center solid contraction is always taking place towards what center 
ठीक है राइट नो रिगार्डिंग दिस होल ऑल्सो फ्रेंड्स प्लीज लुक एट यार रिगार्डिंग द होल ऑल्सो प्लीज ऑब्जर्व द मेटल इज मूविंग ऑलवेज टूवर्ड्स द सेंटर ड्यू टू वॉट कॉन्ट्रेक्शन ड्यू टू कॉन्ट्रेक्शन साइज ऑफ दिस होल विल बी गेटिंग वॉट डिक्रीज सो इस 200 mm dimension will be decreasing towards the center at the same time this 5 mm diameter also getting contracted towards the center that's why the size of the hole will be getting what decreased to overcome this one we need to increase the size of the hole on the pattern we need to increase the size of the hole on the pattern okay na now but please strictly speaking how this hole is produced in the casting how this hole is produced in the casting by providing a core by providing what core please observe this point by providing core means uh, if i am adding some elements for the hole means size of the core will be getting what increased size of the core will be getting what increased due to contraction of this particular material size of the hole hole will be getting what decreased to overcome this one hole size on the pattern will be getting what increased hole size on the pattern will be getting what increased okay now if you look at closely if i am considering 2% shrinkage for this material linearly this 200 mm will be shrink by how much i am considering here 4 mm 2% of 200 mm contraction is linearly 2% i am considering friends because he has given in terms of percentage so similarly for 100 mm if we consider 2% how much shrinkage will be there 2 mm here how much mm plus shrinkage will be there here you can think of friends it is uh, how much we are say 2% means i can say point 2 mm shrinkage will be there here 0.1 mm shrinkage will be there the size of the hole is getting decrease it is 4.9 after contraction it is not 5 mm due to shrinkage so here it is uh, how much it is 196 it is uh, 198 it is 9.8 it is 4.9 after contraction due to solid contraction to overcome this one we need to add the shrinkage elements on the pattern linearly for linear dimensions we need to add this particular now the shrinkage values we need to add are you able to follow me right now if you want to find out friends now by adding this you know the shrinkage elements linearly by adding the shrinkage elements linearly i need to find out what is the volume of the pattern what is the volume of the pattern and volume of the casting i am going to find out volume of the pattern means uh, this dimension that is what 200 plus 4 mm i am going to add linearly for 200 mm i am adding 4 mm next phase uh, 100 plus 2 mm i am going to add here next uh, 10 plus 0.2 i am going to add 10 plus 0.2 i am going to add then next you can look at friends here then this one please look at here and we can think of the whole size because we need to find out volume minus i am considering friends here why i am considering minus because circular hole is there so this hole means it is just like a cylindrical form we can say circular cross section having some height means a cylindrical section that is pi by 4 d square what is the diameter actual friends here 5 mm by i am adding the shrinkage elements that is 5.01 5.1 i can say 5.1 all square i am going to consider Pi by four d square multiplied by height. What is the height? Ten point two. I am going to consider. After adding the shrinkage, this height will be ten point two. Na this one. So this is a volume of the pattern. Next, I need to find out volume of the casting. What is the volume of the casting? Two hundred into hundred into ten minus the whole size. I am going to reduce pi by four d square. That is pi square multiplied by height. is a 10 this is size of this hole i am going to consider so by finding this ratio friends volume of the pattern to the volume of the casting ratio of volume of the pattern to the volume of the casting will be equal to 1.06 1.0612 i can consider 1.0612 we can consider okay so if this hole is given like this friends we will consider like this minus we have to consider but the contraction is taking place toward the center so that's why size of the hole will be getting reduced size of the hole will be getting reduced due to contraction of the material to overcome this shrinkage elements will be added on the hole size shrinkage elements will be added on the hole size
okay na so i think most of our friends also getting very good very good keep it up friends uh, right you are doing well i think uh, most of them are giving uh, same answer 1.06 uh, right i hope this uh, concept is clear to everyone okay so if this concept is clear to everyone then we will move to the next question okay All right good so keep on working friends uh, so that if you have any doubts we can clarify here okay right very good right now please look at friends here this question you can look at it is with respect to now the core core concept concept of the core buoyancy force core print area chaplet area with respect to that the concept is there so a 100 mm square hole is to be produced in a casting of length 300 mm the density of the core metal used is 4.5 grams per cc and density of the molten metal used is 8.9 grams per cc grams per centimeter cube if the surface area of the core print used is 5 centimeter square the cross sectional area of the chaplet used is how much uh, uh, please think of uh, chaplet area will be required so that we need to find out so can you please uh, look at this question friends here right no <coughs> oh, you need to check it out this uh, units also friends units balancing is also very very important and most of the cases we are assuming that core means it is a circular cross section i am talking about core look at friends uh, core c o r e core most of the cases we are assuming that the core means is a cylindrical is not like this friends what is the shape of the hollow cavity what is the shape of the hollow casting you need to produce that we are producing in the form of what core it may be any shape circular square rectangular any shape it may be there so what is the shape of the hollow cavity you required in the casting same we are going to produce in the form of what core same we are going to produce in the form of what core that is a basic concept okay na so here the core is in the form of a square cross section it is in the form of square cross section if you look at friends here now this is uh, like this i want to produce a casting like this friends right i want to produce a casting like this a hollow casting is required the hollow shape is which shape i can say it is in square form it will be in square form i am going to consider square cross section we need to consider so how you are going to produce this one if you look at this uh, figure friends let us say this is a mould cavity this is a mould cavity friends moulding sand is there na here yeah, this is a mould cavity we are going to produce so before going to fill the metal into the cavity before going to fill the metal into the cavity i am going to provide a core i am going to provide a core please look at here the square cross section of the core i am going to provide here this is a core what is the shape of this core core is a square cross section square cross section please of that this is the core now the size of this particular core will be 100 mm this is 100 mm the length is given it is a 300 mm the length of this particular core will be 300 mm we can consider okay na now after filling here then i am going to fill the liquid metal into this particular cavity i am going to fill the liquid metal into the cavity throughout the circumference of the core we are going to fill the liquid metal core is there at the center throughout the circumference of the core we are going to fill the liquid metal it will be allowed to solidify so once the metal is allowed to solidify inside the cavity the metal is converted into uh, cavity then after solidification is over break this uh, mold remove the casting inside the casting we are using the core core is produced by molding sand it is produced by what molding sand now i will break the core and i will remove the sand in place of the core can i get a hollow cavity can i get a hollow cavity that is a concept that is a concept so by using the core we are producing hollow castings but here due to difference in uh, densities because core is having less density 4.5 grams per cc around which we have an initial liquid metal is there liquid metal density is more than core density due to this uh, density differences which force is coming onto the liquid metal which force is coming onto the liquid metal buoyancy force is coming onto the liquid metal so due to this buoyancy force if i position the core here it is not here there is a chance of changing the position of the core due to this upward buoyancy force position of the core will be getting what changed to overcome this one we required core prints if the core print area is not sufficient 
then we need to provide what chaplets to support the core we require to provide chaplet is asking what is the chaplet area required what is the chaplet area required okay right now if you look at friends here to find out this uh, now the net buoyancy force which is coming onto the core to find out the net buoyancy force which is uh, coming onto the core we are going to use simple formula uh, vg rho m minus rho c we can consider friends the net buoyancy force which is coming onto the core will be equal to p equal to vg rho m minus rho c where p is a net buoyancy force which is coming onto the core in newtons v is volume of the core g is acceleration due to gravity rho m is density of the molten liquid metal rho c is the density of the core material rho c is the density of the core material right this point now i i need to substitute friends here please look at here volume of the core i am going to substitute volume of the core is a square cross section here friends that is 100 square that is area multiplied by 300 is a length length here is 300 so this is a volume of the core so this i am going to convert into meters that is a 10 meter cube 10 power minus 9 now g value is a 9.81 i am going to substitute in si system so density difference is we can say 8.9 minus 4.5 we are going to consider and this is grams per centimeter cube i am going to convert into kg per meter cube so we are going to multiply with what 10 power 3 i am converting because the units are here this is grams per centimeter cube i am convert them into which form kg per meter cube so to convert the into kg per meter cube i will make it as 10 power 3 okay now if you simplify this one the buoyancy force uh, the net buoyancy force which is coming it will be 129 point 129 point 492 newtons the buoyancy force which is coming is 129 point 42 this is the buoyancy force net buoyancy force now the question will friends look at here and he is saying that uh, the core print area used is what 5 cm square please look at this point right now i am going to slightly move up what depends now i'm look at here now this is the buoyancy force friends generally to find out the core print area we are using formula friends p is less than or equal to 3.5 times ac where ac is the core print area ac is the core print area in centimeter square p is in newtons so this 3.5 is a, a constant which will be having units of newton per centimeter square okay so from here if you want to find out ac by equating this one friends p by 3.5 if i am considering friends here this p is 129.492 divided by 3.5 if you look at we are getting friends uh, the core print area we are getting is approximately 37 cm square so to completely overcome this uh, buoyancy force to completely support this butler you know, the uh, upward load which is coming 129.49 how much core print area is required to support this one core print area required will be 37 cm square is required but how much is saying friends here in the problem he has mentioned clearly that how much this value is saying friends here it is 5 cm square only core print area if the surface area of the core print used is 5 cm square only is saying okay 5 cm square only but how much is required 37 cm square is required so the difference of the force can be balanced by what by providing what chaplets in this particular another force only some portion of this force will be overcome by uh, supported by providing what core print the remaining unbalanced force can be supported by providing what chaplet chaplet okay na this one actually how much uh, core print area is required to overcome this force 37 cm square is required but uh, critically speaking friends uh, actually how much we are providing 5 cm square only because the question is it is mentioned this uh, core print area is 5 cm square only so that remaining unbalanced force will be supported by providing what chaplet so that chaplet area we need to find out that chaplet area we need to find out right this one so to find out this one friends yaar i am going to use simple formula unbalanced force unbalanced force or unbalanced load will be equal to p minus 3.5 times ac that is uh, core print area it is let us say friends here it is actual i am saying this is a theoretical you can observe this ac will be what theoretical i can consider 
T means theoretical from the formula we are getting. But actually, how much you are providing on this one? It is actual. A means actual. How much you are providing? Phi only. So, how much this uh, difference of force I can consider? 129.492 minus 3 into, please think of how much? Sorry, 3.5 now. 3.5. One minute. 3.5 times AC actual we can consider. So, this is 3.5, 3.5 multiplied by 5 we can consider. 5 is the actual area which is given the problem. So, if you are cutting fence this one, how much you are getting this value? 311, 311, double 9, 2 newtons we are going to get. So, this is the unbalanced force because you are not providing sufficient area of the core print. So, to overcome this one, we need to provide what? Chaplet. We need to provide chaplet. So, you can remember this point friends here. For every 1 Newton of, for every 1 Newton of unbalanced balance force, for every 1 Newton of unbalanced, uh, un, no, balanced force, we need to provide 29 mm square of chaplet area. 29 mm square of chaplet area will be required for every 1 newton of 29 mm square how much chaplet area will be required friends for every 1 newton 29 mm square of chaplet area will be required to support that unbalanced force will be supported by what chaplet so here what is the unbalanced force friends here this one is the unbalanced force multiplied by 29 mm square will give what the chaplet area required okay so the chaplet area will be equal to chaplet area required will be equal to we can think of it's a double nine two multiplied by 29 this is the chaplet area required this will be in mm square we can consider so how much friends are three two four seven three two four seven point point uh, seven six eight 768 mm square is the chaplet area required. So, this you can convert them into right centimeter square. I can say this is uh, 32.47 centimeter square is the chaplet area required. So, how much chaplet area will be required here? 32.47 centimeter square chaplet area is required. For every 1 Newton of unbalanced force, 29 mm square of chaplet area will be required. So, this is an unbalanced force. The chaplet area required will be equal to, this is 29 multiplied by this unbalanced force. This is in mm square, can convert into centimeter square. Now, sometimes uh, you are getting some doubt fence here. For example, here in this particular formula, 3.5 AC, I am, you know, because in the problem they have mentioned 5. In place of the 5, the theoretical, you know, this area what you are getting from this formula, I am putting 37. If I am putting 3.5 multiplied by 37, what is unbalanced force? Unbalanced force will be 0. If unbalanced force will be 0, there is no need of what? Chaplet. If there is no need of chaplet. If the unbalanced force will be 0, there is no need of chaplet. Core prints will be sufficient to support the core. Core prints will be sufficient to support the core. If the core print is not sufficient to support the core, then we need to provide what? Chaplets. Then we need to provide what? Chaplets. Okay. So, if this area, friends, if this area what you are getting here will be 37, then there is no need of chaplet. But here, what is the chaplet area? What is the core print area he has given the problem? It is 5 centimeters square only. 5 centimeters square only. That is why the problem is coming. So, to overcome this one, we are providing what? Chaplet area we are going to provide. Okay. Now, this point you can please uh, remember this point, friends. Yeah, right? This one. This is a basic concept related to what? Core prints and chaplets. These are used to support the core inside the cavity. Core prints and chaplets are used to support the core inside the cavity. Chaplets are the metallic object to support the core inside the cavity. Okay? This point. Right. We will discuss, friends, uh, another uh, concept related to filling time. 
Now that there are three, um, please think of two time spans. So filling time, solidification time. If I allow the metal into the cavity, time taken to fill the cavity is called filling time. Time taken to fill the cavity is called filling time. If I allow the metal to solidify, then it is called solidification time. It is called what? Solidification time. Time taken to convert liquid into solid form is called what? Solidification time. Okay. This point you can please observe. Here. Now, if you look at this point, here, during filling of a cylindrical cavity, so here the cavity is cylindrical form, 200 mm diameter and 300 mm length, using a gating system having gating ratio of 1 is to 1.5 is to 2. It is an unpressurized gating system. Right. And height of this molten metal above the gate is 250 mm. HT is 250 mm. The time taken to fill the cavity is 25 seconds. Then determine the diameter of the sprue at the bottom to avoid air aspiration effect. Diameter of the sprue at the bottom is asking, means indirectly gate area is asking. If the gate area will be equal to sprue area, gate area will be equal to sprue area by default what type of gating system? It is a top gating system. It is a top gating system. Okay, na? In unpressurized gating system, where is the choke area? At the bottom of the sprue. Choke area will control the flow of the metal in unpressurized or pressurized gating system. Choke area will control the flow of the metal. In unpressurized gating system, where is a choke area? Choke area will be at the bottom of the sprue. That bottom of the sprue area we have to find. That bottom of the sprue area we have to find. Okay, this point you can observe. And please look at friends here. One point you have to remember is uh, what is the shape of the cavity we can consider? Shape of the cavity will be cylindrical form we can consider. Please observe this point. It is a cylindrical form of the cavity. Right, please observe this point. Uh, how much is this one? It is a 200 mm diameter and length is how much? 300 mm length we can consider. Okay. Now, I am going to use this sink of a top gating system I am going to use here. So, I may be getting doubt. Sir, why you are using top gating system? Because he is asking to find out the bottom sprue area fence here. He is asking to find out bottom sprue area. That is, HT will be equal to 250 mm here as given, right? Because here, this area is asking, friends, area of the sprue at the bottom. This area, this area will be same. Area of the sprue. So, if you look at, if area of the sprue equal to area of the gate, then by default, what type of gating system? Top gating system. If the area of the sprue will be equal to area of the gate, if I am considering, then by default, it is a top gating system. In unpressurized gating system, as per this gating ratio, unpressurized gating system, choke area will be at the bottom of the sprue. That will control the flow. That area we are going to find out. Okay, now this one. Now, if you want to find out by using top gating system, filling time equal to volume of the cavity by area of the gate or area of the sprue, I am going to find out. This is root over 2G HT, I am going to find out. So, here we need to find out area of the sprue or area of the gate because it is a top gating system. Okay, right. Then if you want to find out friends, filling time he has given, it is 25 seconds. Volume is pi by 4 d square. Diameter will be how much? 200 mm whole square into, please look at friends, yeah, height is 300. Area we need to find out now, area of the sprue, root over 2 g 9810. HD is given this is a 250, I am substituting in all the units are in mm friends. G value m, this mm per second square I am going to substitute here. From here I am going to find out area of the sprue. Area of the sprue I am going to find out. Here the area of the sprue is how much please tell me. Area of the sprue we are getting is 170 point, 170.134 mm square is the area. Now, if you want to find out diameter, friends, he is asking about determine diameter, no? So, area of the sprue equal to pi by 4, diameter of the sprue square will be equal to 170.134. So, from here, we are going to find out diameter of the sprue, diameter of the sprue will be equal to 14.72. Please check it, the answer is correct or not. 14.72 mm. Diameter of the sprue will be equal to 14.72 mm. Please check it, friends. You are getting same answer or not? Okay. 
14 point seven two. Very good. Very good. Yes. Yes. All of you are getting same answer. Please, please. Very good. Yeah. Please check it, friends. Yeah. <coughs> right. Area of this proof equal to 14.72 mm. 14.72 mm. So the cavity is, friends. It is a cylindrical cavity. You have to remember. Volume is pi by 4 d square height. Pi by 4 d square height. So generally we are finding filling time. But he is asking here by giving filling time, he is asking area of the sprue that you have to remember. Okay, by use uh, top gating. You are getting, sir, why you are assuming top gating? Because he is saying area of the sprue is uh, asking to find. So, indirectly, area of the gate we are going to find. See, here, choke area is what here area of the sprue at the bottom, it will control the flow. So, area of the sprue equal to area of the gate we can consider here, right. So that is yes, uh, some of them are asking the question in previous question, uh, yeah, in previous question, this how this 29 mm, it is empirical formula friends, it is empirical experimental value. In previous question, this 29 mm square for every one Newton of unbalanced force, the chaplet area required is 29 mm square. It is a empirical equation. It is a, by experiments, uh, by conducting experiments, they have given this value. We have to consider this value as a constant. It is an empirical equation by conducting experiments. This you have to remember, right? So this is there, friends. In even textbooks also you can refer. This will be there. Okay. For every one newton of balance, uh, unbalanced force, 29 mm square is required. It is a experimental data. Okay. Right. Now this is over, friends. And then we will move to the next question. Please look at here. This is interesting, friends. Please look at. Now two figures are given, friends. Figure A. It is a bottom gating. Figure B is a top gating. It is a top gating. It is a bottom gating. H m equal to H. So please observe here. H m is uh, yes slightly modify uh, change this notation. H m equal to H t pouring height. Yes given. H is the height of this mould cavity. H m equal to H means H t equal to H m in this particular problem. Both of the below cases and the time required to fill the mould in bottom gating arrangement is 20 minutes. Bottom gating arrangement. What is the time? 20 minutes. Then time required to fill mould cavity by using figure B means it is a top uh, top gating system. What is the time we have to find out? I think most of them are knowing this particular one. I think friends, please uh, try this question. Please try this question. I think we have given friends one condition. If if H m equal to H t, generally we are discussing this one. H m equal to H t in our notation. H m is height of this mould cavity. H t is a height pouring height of the liquid metal. In this problem, in this problem, what is this one? H m equal to H. Please think of it. Height of this mould cavity is what? Capital H. What is the pouring height? H m. What is the pouring height? H m. Both are same, no? They are same. So, notations, they are slightly different. Friends. We are assuming H m equal to H t. Here, H equal to H m. Okay, no? Please, the notations are just changing. If this is the case, we know that friends are Time taken to fill by using bottom gating system, time taken to fill by using bottom gating system equal to time taken to fill by using what top gating system, top gating system. I can say bottom B, I will write friends here. TFB means bottom. If HM equal to HT, time taken to fill by using bottom gating system is so two times of time taken to fill by using top gating system. So, bottom gating system time is given 20 minutes here. Top gating system time we need to find out this one. Top gating system time he is asking. So, cavity B means what? It is a top gating system. You can observe this figure. Where the sprue area will be gate area. Liquid metal is directly entered into the cavity from the bottom of the sprue. It is a top gating. Here liquid metal is coming from this bottom of the sprue through the runner. Through the gate, it is entered into the cavity. It is a bottom gating system. It is a bottom gating system. Bottom gating system, how much time? 20 minutes. Then the time required to fill the mould in top gate. This is asking here. So time required to fill by using top gating system is how much? Now we can think of 20 by 2. It will be equal to 10 minutes. 10 minutes. So the notations, friends, please, are slightly modified here. This problem, you have to observe. HM is height of this mould cavity, H is pouring height. 
So in this problem, pouring height is HM. Height of this mould cavity H. Both are same. Then this is the condition. I think uh, you are getting this time frames very good. The time required to fill the cavity is how much? 10 minutes. It is a very, very simple formula. Without using the calculator, within a fraction of time, you have to solve this particular question because conditions are clearly mentioned. Okay, na? Right. So, this type of questions are coming in gate examination. You have to do very, very quickly and save the time. This time you have to use for little bit, you know, lengthy questions. Okay. Right. Right. You can think of friends here. This is a another good question. Please look at here. In a sand casting process, if the solidification time is to be one third for a given unit volume of the material, volume of the metal is constant unit volume, solidification time is reduced to one third, then the corresponding increase in casting area. If the solidification time is uh, is a decreasing, what happens? Please think of friends here. Percentage corresponding percentage increase in casting area. Please think of here. Right? So if you look at closely friends here, the solidification time and the surface area they are inversely proportional. We know that. According to Chavino's principle, friends, solidification time is directly proportional to volume to surface area square. Solidification time and this is surface area. A is surface area. Both are inversely proportional. Both are inversely proportional. Please look at this point. Okay. Inversely proportional. So, if this uh, solidification time is uh, reduced here, then what is the percentage increase in area? Please think you need to think of. So, if you look at friends here, if I consider TS1 by TS2, I am going to consider friends. So, two cases I am going to consider. So, initial volume, this is uh, volume is unit volume only. 1 by A1 whole square, 1 by 1 by A2 whole square we can consider. So, two cases I am going to consider. TS1 by TS2. 1 by A1, 1 by A2. Okay. V is a unit volume. Volume is constant. We are going to put. Okay. Now, what is happening friends here? Let us say TS1. Time is a uh, 1 minute I am considering. The next one it will be reduced to what? 1 third. Second case is the time is reduced to 1 third friends here. Then it is please think of here. What is happening? This is A2 by a2 by A1 whole square. So, what is happening friends now? A2 by A1, A2 by A1 will be equal to under root 3. Under root 3 we can consider. Okay, this one. Now, percentage increase in area friends here. So, percentage increase in area. Percentage increase in area means I can think of friends here. A2 minus A1 by A1 into 100. Okay. Now, you can think of friends, if you simplify this equation, what is happening here? Right. <coughs> now, this one friends here. A2 by A1, it is root 3 minus 1 into 100. Root 3 minus 1 into 100. So, it is a 1.732 minus, we can think of friends here, it is 73. 0.2 percent we can consider. So, percentage increase in area is 73.2 percent. Yeah, very good, very good. All of you are getting same answer, right? Yeah. So, please look at friends here. The answer is 73.2 uh, percent. You can say percentage increase in area. But if you look at here, friends, gate examination, this type of observation is very, very important. What is that friends here? Here, in this particular problem, yes, given friends, uh, if the solidification time is uh, changing, what is the percentage change in area is asking? Okay, this is one, one question let us say. If I want to change the question in get examination, I will give the question like this. If the percentage change in area is given to you, because initial case, let us say uh, some area A1 is there. Now, the, in the second case, area is changed. It is A2. If A1 is changing to A2, what is the percentage change in solidification time? What is the percentage change in solidification time? Are you able to follow me? Look at this point friends here. Here, if the solidification time is changing, what is the change in area is asking? For example, in a given question, by changing the diameter and by changing the height or by changing these areas, if the areas are changing, what is the change in solidification time? What is the change in solidification time? Percentage change in solidification time. This type of questions, modification of the questions will be there that you have to observe carefully. 
if the area changes will be given to you then you can find out uh, ts1 ts2 percentage change in solidification time it may be increase or decrease that you have to think okay na right this is a good point friends here you have to remember a moon that to the next question friends please look at here it may be little bit lengthy question but there is a chance of uh, this type of questions can be appear in gate examination for 2 marks 2 marks this question is coming in esc examination for 10 or 15 marks but this question can be asked in gate examination for 2 marks okay so comparison of the solidification times generally we have discussed up to two uh, geometrical shapes only uh, we can say cube to the cylinder cylinder to the cube or uh, cylinder to the sphere like this but sometimes if the three are given three are given how to solve three castings are given three risers are given how to compare the solidification times this point is very very important okay na so now if you look at this point friends here now he is saying that a cube sphere and cylinder cylinder the condition is given h equal to d made up of cast iron having same volume were casted volumes are same metal is same okay under identical conditions if the solidification time for cube sphere tc ts and cylinder respectively then we need to find out which ratio is correct we need to check it which ratio is correct we need to check it can you please look at friends here now i am going to simplify this equation friends look at now if it is given three castings or four castings or it may be two castings means we can find out friends uh, first one to second one we can easily find but if three are given how to find three are given how to find but here he has given friends one condition volume is same so i am assuming friends here volume equal to let us say 1 cm cube one unit volume i am going to assume friends here v equal to volume i am assuming one let us say one unit one unit cube you can say volume is uh, let us say i am assuming friends one unit volume is constant no in three cases volume is constant three cases also volume is constant no material properties also same because three are produced by cast iron only right so if you want to find out friends here i will give one simple procedure friends please look at first i will consider for what cube right cube how to find out this one you can look at friends here in a cube i am assuming friends uh, volume equal to a cube a cube and means volume it is equal to 1 cm cube or 1 meter cube i am assuming 1 unit volume 1 unit volume in three cases also i am going to assume 1 unit volume so that simplification is easy okay now a cube equal to 1 a equal to what 1 unit i can consider a equal to 1 unit now if you look at a uh, solidification time will be you can think of friends uh, uh, will be equal to c that is a mould constant volume to surface area whole square according to what is that chonum's principle now we are assuming friends volume is constant that is equal to 1 cm cube na so solidification time will be equal to c volume is 1 cm cube uh, surface area of the cube is 6a square 6a square i am going to consider so if you consider this solidification time will be equal to c that is <coughs> 1 by 6 <coughs> 1 by 6 av is what 1 whole square a is equal to what 1 whole square friends yeah this one this whole square volume to surface area whole square so if you consider this one by putting this one what is the friends i am going to express solidification time in times of constant what is c mould constant mould constant the c is the same for all the castings because casting metal is same they are going to solidify under identical conditions so mould constant c will be same for three castings okay right now if you substitute this value friends here how much you are getting friends here this is uh, i am if you simplify this one <coughs> this is a uh, 0.02 point 0.02 multiplied by c capital c you can think of it c is there no i am going to express in terms of 0.0277 c similarly for sphere and cylinder also we are going to express and you can compare in three cases also c is same okay you can compare this particular solidification time now if you look at friends uh, second one is what sphere right so for sphere also friends i am going to write volume equal to 4 by 3 pi r cube will be equal to 1 unit volume so what is the value of r friends here one you think of friends 3 by 4 pi whole power 
1 by 3 I am going to write. This R value I am going to substitute here. Now, what is that friends? Solidification time will be equal to C. Volume is 1. 1 area whole square. I am assuming volume is 1 centimeter square or 1 unit volume. So, this one C will be equal to what is the surface area of this please think of here? Q B uh, surface area of the sphere is 4 pi r square. 4 pi. What is the value of r? r is uh, 3 by 4 pi. Please think of 2 by 3. Why 2 by 3? Already square is you now this 4 pi r square by this is 3 and it is all square. This is very very important. It is also old square is there. If you simplify this one friends here, this you are going to get is 0 0.04, 0 0.0431, 0 0.0431 times of C, 0 0.0431 times of C, this is 0 0.0277 times of C, C is a mould constant which is a constant for a given material, okay, right. Now, this one, please think of, if you look at, similarly, I am going to find out for what? Cylinder. This is for cylinder. So, cylinder, <coughs> cylinder also, you can consider, friends, I am going to find out for cylinder, what is the volume? Pi by 4, D square, H will be equal to 1. In the problem, he has mentioned H equal to D, H equal to D. So, here friends, uh, I can say H equal to D equal to, this, um, what we are getting friends here, volume equal to pi by 4 D cube, pi by 4 D cube. So, D equal to 4 by pi whole power 1 by 3. Okay, so, V equal to pi by 4 D cube equal to 1, D equal to 4 by pi whole power 1 by 3. So, solidification time will be equal to C volume to surface area whole square. Volume is one unit volume, C constant, it is one. Surface area, now friends here it is a casting total surface area we have to consider. 2 times pi by 4 d square plus pi d h, pi d h whole square. 2 times pi by 4 d square plus pi d h whole square. Okay? Now I am going to substitute h equal to d in this particular equation. h equal to d I am going to substitute in this particular equation. Okay, if you substitute H equal to D, what is that you are getting C is 1 by 3 by 2 pi D square whole square. Because for a cylinder he has given H equal to D condition is given, H equal to D. Now I am going to substitute uh, D equal to 4 by pi, 3 by 2 pi D square, right. C equal to 1 by 3 by 2 pi D square is 4 by pi whole power 2 by 3, 2 by 3 whole square. Now, if you simplify this equation, friends, you are getting now 0 0.03, <coughs> 0 0.03259 times of C. Right. Now, I am going to find, so if you want to compare, friends, here, please uh, compare this one very easily. I can write down here solidification time of what? Cube solidification time of the sphere, solidification time of the cylinder. I am going to compare. Take a, what is this one friends here? We are getting 0 0.0277. See all the cases same. Now. C will be, uh, I am cancelling. This is a point 0. What is the sphere you are getting? 0 0.0431. 0 0.0431. This is point 0 0.03. 0.03259. So, if you compare this one, which is having more solidification time, sphere is having, for a given volume, sphere is having more solidification time, followed by cylinder, followed by what? Solidification time of the cube. Cube, sphere and cylinder. But the answer, friends, if you want to match the answer, the answer given is something different. What is that? You can look at here. We need to find out ratios. So, he has given, friends, uh, 1. Here, 1 is there. So, if you look at, for example, if you are getting uh, sphere is 1, if you divided this uh, value by the sphere value, if you are dividing, friends, then you are going to get the first answer you are going to get. This answer you are going to get. Please check it. 0 0.651, 0 0.76. If you look at here, 
if I am uh, dividing friends here because he is asking to compare here. So if you divide because uh, this pair uh, solidification time is given one. So if you divided this by this 0 0.027 divided by 0 0.431, if you are dividing this one, then you are going to get this value friends here. How much you get? 0 0.65, 0 0.65, 1. I am going to divide the total equation by 0 0.0431 to match this particular one. So, point uh, this one friends, how much you are getting this value? 0 0.76, 0 0.76. So, this will be the answer. Answer you are getting is option A. What is the answer you are getting? Option A. Yes. Please uh, check it friends here. You are going to get the option here is what? A. And sometimes friends, if you they want to compare the solidification time, I will compare like this. Solidification time of the sphere will be greater than, solidification time of the cylinder will be greater than, solidification time of what? Cube. Can I compare like this? Yes or no? This is, you can think of friends, increasing, I guess, sphere is more than cylinder, cylinder is more than what? Cube. I can say it is a cube, right? Cube. Cube. Okay. This one. So, cube is having less, uh, please think of uh, which one? Less solidification time. Sphere is having more solidification time, it will take more time. Okay? Sphere, cylinder, cube like this, I can compare. So, they may ask the question like this or they may ask the question like this. Okay? Please check it friends here. Please check it. It is a good question. right? It may be given any shape friends. If two values are given, we can directly find out the ratio. If three is given, then we can use this method. Four is also given, then you can use this method only. Okay? But three maximum three it will because it will take more time, right? Two marks question it can be asked, friends. Right? Two marks question it can be asked. Yes, any good question? Very good, very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good, very good. Yes. <coughs> Nishant, Nishant Singh is saying good question. Yes, is a good question. Very good, friends. Please try. Please try this question. Yeah, is it with respect to riser design. Uh, calculate the dimensions of cylindrical side riser H equal to d by two to produce a casting of dimensions. Uh, the solidification time for the riser is twenty five percent greater than the casting. Use which one? Chavino's principle. You can use Chavino's principle. And you can observe friends here, the very important point here is, he is saying that dimensions of the cylindrical side riser, but the condition given is H equal to D by 2. Side riser, what is the optimum condition? H equal to D. Top riser, what is the optimum condition? H equal to D by 2. This optimum condition is required to get minimum surface area, to get minimum surface area or to get maximum solidification time to get maximum solidification time or to get minimum surface area. Okay? This one. Please uh, try to think of this particular question friends here. Now, if you look at this one, <coughs> right? So, means here he has given it is a side riser, but the condition given is H equal to D by 2 means it is not a optimum riser. If optimum riser means by default it is H equal to D only. If you mention in the problem, if it is optimum riser by default it is H equal to D. If it is not mentioned means, uh, then we can think of friends, uh, it is not an optimum riser. What is the condition is given? That condition we have to substitute. That condition we have to substitute. There is no option. Take a right. Now, we can think of friends here. This question, I will make it here very simple way. Now, direct one step friends here. You can think of like this. Solidification time of, now you can think of what? A riser will be equal to 1.25 times of solidification time of the Casting. casting, C means casting, R means riser. So, riser solidification time will be more than casting, that is the condition. Okay. So, according to Chavinov's principle, what is the solidification time volume to surface area whole square for a riser, 1.25 times of volume to surface area whole square for what casting. Now, the mould constant, both the cases will be same, you can cancel it, you can cancel the mould constant. because casting material, riser material, both will be same. You can cancel the mould constant. Okay? Now, volume to surface area of the riser. 
what type of riser side riser side riser means the total surface area we have to consider so this is a cavity we are providing the riser to the side of the cavity we are providing the riser to the side of the cavity means so total surface area we have to consider so volume is pi by 4 d square h surface area is a total surface area 2 times pi by 4 d square plus pi d h i am going to consider this whole square it is 1.25 times of volume to surface area of what casting i have to find out <coughs> okay what is the volume to surface area of the oh sorry Now please look at friends, volume to surface area of the casting we have to find out. That is uh, 50, 25, 15 by 2 times half, 50 into 25 plus 25 into 15 plus 15 into 50. It is all square, all square. So we need to find out here, simplification. And here friends, the condition is H equal to D by 2, we have to substitute here. If you substitute h equal to d by 2 here, you are getting this is a d by 8 all square. Please uh, simplify this one. Sir. In this one, if you substitute h equal to d by 2, you are getting d by 8 all square. It will be equal to 1.25 times of what this value you are getting friends here. If you simplify this one, we are getting 1.25 times of 15.58. 15.58. volume to surface area. So, if you multiply this one friends here, then the D value you are getting, if you simplify, what is the D value, please check it, 35 point, 35 point 3, very good, 35 point 3 centimeter is the D value and you can substitute H equal means uh, D by 2 you can consider, H equal to D by 2, simple question friends, this is a simple question, but you have to remember, it is not a optimum side riser. If it is optimum side riser, H equal to D. If you substitute H equal to D here, you are getting D by 6. I am going to substitute H equal to D by 2. Sir, why you are substituting H equal to D by 2? Because the condition given is H equal to D by 2. It is not an optimum side riser. If you substitute this one, we are getting D by 8 all square. D by 8 all square, then you can simplify. Okay. So, this is a simple question, friends. It is based on the Chauvinov's principle, riser design he has given. Yeah, you can think of this question, friends, here. Now, this type of questions are uh, common in gate examination, if you look at here. A cylindrical side riser H equal to D. Yes, clearly mentioned side riser H equal to D means it is optimum side riser. It is used to produce a slab casting of dimensions. Uh, total solidification time, please remember, first, uh, now the beginning of the class we have discussed. Total solidification time, do not get confused. Solidification time or solidif uh, total solidification time, donum same rehega. Okay? So, solidification time, total solidification time, both will be same. Right? And uh, it is, uh, for casting it is 1.6, for riser it is uh, 2 minute. Then he is asking what is the dimensions of the riser. Okay? Now, if you want to find out this type of questions, friends, here, here also one step problem you can make it, friends, here. Just I am going to find out here solidification time of the casting to the solidification time of the riser will be equal to volume to surface area all square for a casting volume to surface area all square for a riser right now yes given friends this is a 1.6 this is a 2 it will be equal to volume to surface area of the casting so 7.5 into 12.5 into 2 divided by 2 times of 7.5 into 12.5 plus 12.5 into 2 plus 2 into 7.5. This is all square, right? Divided by volume to surface area of the riser. So, if you want friends, I will write here volume to surface area. This is pi by 4 d square multiplied by height. Side riser 2 times pi by 4 d square plus pi d h. In this equation, if I am substituting h equal to d, by substituting h equal to d, you are getting d by 6. So, I am writing here, this is a d by 6 all square. d by 6 all square. If you simplify this one, I am going to get the d value here, 
What is the D value we are getting here? Please look at. Yes, anybody is getting the answer? How much? What is the answer here? 4.7, very good. 4.702 centimeter. Now, my dear friends, please look at here one minute. Now, here in this question, please look at solidification time of the casting, solidification time of the riser, volume to surface area of the casting, volume to surface area of the riser. So, in this case, we are finding the dimensions of the riser, dimensions of the riser. Another gate examination, the question can be changed like this. How dimensions of the riser will be given, dimensions of the casting is given, solidification time of the casting is given. He may be asked to find out what solidification time of riser. See here, four, please think of uh, four uh, variables are there here. In these four variables, any three variables will be given to you. Can we find uh, the unknown fourth variable can be determined? Unknown fourth variable can be determined easily? Yes or no? Please observe. that. Here he is asking to find out dimensions of the riser. If the dimensions of the riser is given, can I find solidification time of the riser? If he is asking to find out solidification time of the riser, we can calculate solidification time of what riser. Or sometimes sir, solidification time of the riser is given, casting solidification time is given, he may be asking. So, how the questions can be changed in gate examination, you have to observe. That is very, very important. Okay, na? Please, I think uh, you are getting the answer, friends. 4.702 is the correct answer. Right? So, we will move to the next question, friends. And here also, most of them are getting the doubt here. So, in centrifugal casting here, <coughs> in G factor calculation, whether we have to consider outside diameter, inside diameter, most of them are getting the doubt. So, we need to find out uh, the solution for this. A true centrifugal casting operation is used to produce a hollow casting of 25 centimeter outside and 22.5 inside diameter. Uh, the rotational speed required, we have to find G factor is 65. Okay? So, is, uh, please look at in this problem, friends, uh, is as given G factor. What is G factor, friends, here? G factor, very simple way, G factor will be equal to, it is a ratio between centrifugal force to gravity force. Very, very simple way. It is a ratio between centrifugal force to gravity force is the G factor. It is given, friends, here, the constant, it is 65 has given. It is a constant. Generally, it is varying from 60 to 70 depending on the size of the casting and material to be used. Okay? So, if you consider this one, friends, if I consider the centrifugal force, I can say G factor, G factor will be equal to centrifugal force means MR omega square by gravity force is MG. If you simplify this one, so what we can say, M, M will be getting cancelled in place of air, R, I can put friends here, D by 2, outside uh, diameter is D, let us say inside diameter is what, let us, you can put friends here, D naught, inside diameter is what, DI, outside diameter is D naught. Okay. So, this is a D naught by 2, G is be there already and I can put omega is a 2 pi n by 60 whole square, 2 pi n by 60 whole square I will consider here. Friends. I am considering friends here D naught. Sir, why you are considering D naught? Please listen carefully. If nothing is mentioned, we are going to find out minimum rotational speed. Minimum rotational speed required such that centrifugal force will be always more than what gravity force. Minimum rotational speed required such that always centrifugal force will be dominating which force? Gravity force. Then only liquid metal is moving away from the center because of which force? Centrifugal force. If you are rotating this mould, due to centrifugal force, liquid metal is forced away from the center. It is forced away from the center. That is why always centrifugal force will be dominating the gravity force. For which what is the minimum speed we need to consider? So, minimum speed will be at outside diameter. Minimum speed will be at outside diameter. If nothing is mentioned, it is always a minimum speed. If they are asking mean speed, I will consider mean diameter. I will consider mean diameter. I will write down friends here. Minimum speed, n minimum speed. If nothing is given, n minimum speed. n minimum speed is at outside diameter. D naught is outside diameter. If they want to find out maximum speed, maximum speed, it will be at inside diameter. Now, sometimes they are asking to find out mean speed. If the mean speed they are asking, it is a mean diameter I am going to find. Mean diameter I am going to find. D naught plus D i by 2 I am going to consider. Mean means D naught plus D i by 2. That is if you want to find out mean speed. 
if nothing is mentioned minimum speed minimum speed is at outside diameter so this point you have to remember then if you simplify this equation friends here what is happening can you please look at friends here this rotational speed if you want to find out right here 2 g 2 g multiplied by g factor g factor divided by d naught under root under root 60 by 2 pi 60 by 2 pi 2 g multiplied by g factor by d naught 60 by 2 pi we can consider so the rotational speed will be equal to 2 g value 9.81 g factor is given 65 by d naught 0.25 we are going to consider under root multiplied by 60 by 2 pi we can consider so from here what is the rotational speed anyone 682 very good 682 right so friends here 6082 means we can consider 683 no anyhow they were going to give this values in the range so if you substitute 682.02 683 both will be same because the values will be given in the gate examination the answer will be in the range in this range will be given it will be given in the form of range okay yes yes very good if you substitute 682.02 683 both will be same there is no difference because the values will be expressed in terms of what the range of answer will be given in the range okay and you can look at fancy here this one if nothing is given i am remitting minimum speed at outside diameter you have to consider maximum speed means at inside diameter if they ask mean speed we can consider mean diameter can be considered okay yes right this is a question with respect to what centrifugal casting is considered now if this is uh, related to slush casting friends please observe that in a slush casting process if you want to thickness of object to be 10 mm it takes 16 uh, seconds time if there is no thickness at uh, 0 seconds, then thickness of the casting produced in 36 seconds will be, right, look at friends, uh, this is a question with respect to slush casting. If I consider TS1 will be 0 initially, so thickness 1 will be 0. If TS1 will be equal, uh, sorry, 2, TS2 will be equal to how much friends here? Uh, 16 seconds. T thickness will be how much you are getting? 10 mm then he is asking what 36 seconds uh, after 36 seconds what should be the thickness of the casting we need to find out it is simply a slush casting technique friends let us say generally this is a dye material dye on this dye we are filling the liquid metal if i fill the liquid metal on this particular dye so liquid metal is getting solidified on this particular surface of the dye it will produce some thickness of the casting at t equal to 0 means liquid metal has not allowed onto the die what is the thickness of the casting 0 at t uh, equal to 0 thickness will be 0 at the solidification time of 0 seconds please think if you allow the metal to solidify time is 0 thickness will be 0 only so if t s 3 equal 36 after 36 seconds what is the thickness we need to find out that is upon this question friends here so we know that friends here uh, we can think of solidification time please uh, thickness will be equal to c1 under root solidification time plus c2 i think friends here t is a thickness ts is solidification time c1 and c2 are the constants which depends on properties of the liquid and dye material which depends on properties of the liquid and dye material okay right so very good I, all of you are getting the answer right it is a 15 very good very good yes very good now if you substitute friends here you now thickness is 0 c1 under root of uh, ts it is also 0 plus c2 so c2 will be equal to 0 right now here friends are uh, ts2 please look at ts2 we can think of it is a 10 c1 under root of 16 plus 0 na? so what is the c1 what is the c1 you are getting friends here 10 by 4 
it is a 2.5 is a c1 okay it's a constant so now the equation is a t uh, c1 under root of uh, ts and uh, this place uh, c2 will be equal to 0 okay so this is the um, well, we have to find out now you can think of friends uh, t3 will be equal to point uh, sorry this is a 2.5 under root of ts solidification time is 36 so this is how much you are getting 15 mm 15 mm okay so this is a uh, uh, one question friends with respect to slush casting thickness please think of it is a solidification time the relationship you have can measure uh, c1 c2 are the constants you have to remember okay yes all of you are getting 15 right correct answer that is correct answer right you can look at friends one question theory questions are coming with respect to you know, the applications as we have discussed uh, in this you no know, theory class also generally theory questions are coming with respect to applications list one casting techniques list two product is given okay now die casting in die casting we have discussed friends pressure die casting technique can we produce carburetors carburetors a will be three a will be three look at friends here the next uh, you can observe friends here next one slush casting just now we are discussing small thickness of the casting slush casting means a decorative item like flower was vases flower was vase flower was vase means uh, it is a decorative item okay so b will be equal to what four b will be four investment casting we are producing highly complex more accuracy objects medical implants metallic objects provide inside the body is called medical implants c is what one next d centrifugal casting d means we can produce hollow pipes cast iron pipes can be produced here so this answer 3 4 1 2 is the uh, answer we can find here 3 4 1 2 very good very good yes yes very good 3 4 1 2 is the correct so this is with respect to friends uh, right casting some questions then please look at i have given one more question friends uh, this is a multiple select question msq msq this time friends in gate examination we can expect uh, this type of questions msq multiple select questions more number of uh, no options may be correct in the options given to you which of the following statements are true right first one rapid cooling rate in die casting leads to better mechanical properties right due to fast state of cooling fine grain structure better mechanical properties this option is correct ferrous materials uh, can be cast by die casting it is wrong because a high melting point metals are not produced by die casting because a die melting point should be very very high required that's why it is not used for ferrous it is used for non ferrous materials only next uh, investment casting is not used for complex shape of the objects it is also galak statement investment casting is meant for complex shape of the objects next in full molding expendable patterns can be used yes it is a correct expendable pattern means what the pattern can be used only once the pattern can be used only once then it is called what expendable pattern casting technique okay this one so a and d are correct friends here is a multiple select question you have to remember a and d are correct a and d are correct very good very good a and d are correct multiple select question this is with respect to msq so these are the questions with respect to casting we'll move to the next friends uh, welding we'll uh, go through the questions uh, right now this question friends here which of the following is a homogeneous welding technique so we have discussed friends three techniques so <coughs> you can th autogenous homogeneous and heterogeneous autogenous homogeneous heterogeneous autogenous solid state homogeneous liquid state heterogeneous solid or liquid state welding technique is saying what is the question friends which of the following is a homogeneous welding technique means it is a liquid state welding technique where homogeneous joint can be produced by using filler material or without filler material okay now here brazing and soldering are what heterogeneous brazing and soldering are heterogeneous forge welding is a solid state welding it is a autogeneous welding autogeneous welding which is a homogeneous welding mig welding mig welding is a homogeneous welding very good very good correct mig welding is a homogeneous welding it is a liquid state welding next now we will look at this questions friends very quickly right now this uh, 
numerical questions are very important right now i will give shortcuts to find out this one because it may take more time to find out uh, by using general method but i will give a shortcut to you okay this can be used in gate examination object type questions we can use linear voltage characteristics is given where is arc voltage in volts arc length in centimeter is saying friends here see l is v is voltage l is arc length arc length generally we will consider mm he has given in centimeter because generally we are considering uh, Uh, this l uh, this constant is uh, let us find here s s less value but he has given 20 and he has uh, given it is in terms of centimeters vi characteristics a linear with open circuit voltage of 80 short circuit current of 4 and amperes determine voltage and current for obtaining maximum arc power and optimum arc length also is asking right so if you understand here we know that now in general method what we can see friends here power will be expressed in terms of what function of a arc length differentiating the power with respect to arc length and equated to zero so we are getting what optimum arc length we are going to get in general friends optimum arc length we are going to find out so by substituting optimum arc length we will kind power voltage current everything we can find out okay na but here please look at now we have given friends one condition if it is a linear power source characteristics maximum power condition that is very very important maximum power condition maximum power condition is given this is very important maximum power condition linear power source characteristics linear power source characteristics is given we can find out friends vt equal to we can think of friends v not by 2 it will be equal to is by 2 what is v not open circuit voltage what is is short circuit current so vt will be equal to 80 by 2 it will be equal to 40 volts it will be equal to is 400 by 2 it will be equal to 200 amperes is is short circuit current is given no open circuit voltage is 80 volts so v not will be equal to 80 volts open circuit voltage short circuit current is 400 amperes so this can be used if maximum power condition linear power source characteristics is there maximum power linear power source i can find here so voltage and current we can find out friends here now if you want to find out optimum arc length please look at here so <laughs> we know that friends here for a linear arc uh, please think of uh, uh, condition what is a stable arc generation condition we know that vt equal to va for linear power source characteristics stable arc generation condition stable arc generation condition for a linear power source characteristics is vt equal to va right so vt will be equal to friends here how much now 40 will be equal to va that is a 30 plus 20 into la arc length we are generally representing l a or capital l we can say now here l a will be equal to how much friends here 0.5 okay 0.5 cm or we can think of friends l a equal to 5 mm optimum arc length of how much 5 mm is the answer we can say so what is the current and voltage voltage is 40 volts current is 200 amperes right arc length is how much optimum arc length is this much then if you want to find out the power p max at optimum arc length the power is p max right so you can find out the p max will be equal to how much here friends here this is 40 multiplied by 200 so 8000 watt at right? 8 kilowatt we can find out 8 kilowatt you can use this shortcut method so that within a minimum time you can find out the solution here right i think or if you are getting very good very good very good right so friends here generally by differentiating this one power we will get arc length optimum arc length now from here also we can find out here you please check it you are going to get the same answer you are going to get the same answer please check it please check it okay because in gate examination time is very very important you can use this shortcut methods to get this particular one okay or you can use this also friends there is no doubt there is no doubt power you can express uh, voltage and current you can express in terms of arc length differentiate the power with respect to arc length and you can find out there is no issue okay but it will take more time you can use this particular condition 
यू कैन यूज दिस पर्टिकुलर कंडीशन ठीक है आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ यू आर गेटिंग एनी डाउट्स आर देर विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू दिस वन प्लीज एनी डाउट्स आर देर यस यस वेरी गुड वेरी गुड राज शुभाष नीरज वेरी गुड ऑल ऑफ यू आर गेटिंग द सेम आंसर राइट वील मूव टू द नेक्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट फ्रेंड्स राइट नाउ यू कैन थिंक ऑफ फ्रेंड्स इट इज विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू मेल्टिंग एफिशियंसी फ्रेंड्स प्लीज लुक एट दिस वन टू सेवन एम एम थिक स्टील प्लेट्स आर प्लेस्ड फाइव एम अपार्ट एंड वेल्डेड बाई बट ज्वाइंट वेल्डिंग इज कैरिड आउट थर्टी वोल्ड एंड एट ए स्पीड ऑफ फाइव एम एम पर सेकंड हीट ट्रांसफर एफिशियंसी इज पॉइंट एट If the heat required to melt the steel is 10 joules per mm cube, and melting efficiency is 0.3, then welding current is. He is asking about what welding current. Please look at this point, friends. This is very, very, you know, important. Most repeatedly asking the questions in gate and ESC also, prelims ESC examination. What is that? We know, friends, melting efficiency will be equal to heat required to melt by heat supplied. Heat required to melt by heat supplied. Look at here. Heat required to melt is given 10 joules per mm cube per unit volume. Heat required to melt is given 10 joules per mm cube per unit volume. So heat supplied also I have to substitute in joules per mm cube per unit volume. I have to calculate. ठीक है ना? Now for which what we are discussing friends? Uh, melting efficiency equal to heat required to melt by V into I by area welding speed. multiplied by heat transfer efficiency this is a very very simple formula but number of times questions are coming with respect to this one number of times questions are coming with respect to this particular formula melting efficiency heat required to melt in joules per mm cube heat supplied in joules per mm cube voltage current area welding speed heat transfer efficiency right please closely observe friends here now heat transfer efficiency is also sometimes known as process efficiency to confuse you sometimes they may mention this is also called what process efficiency heat transfer efficiency or a process efficiency melting efficiency is also called what thermal efficiency melting efficiency it is also called thermal efficiency now the question friends please observe now you may be getting what is the area of this weld bead you may be getting the doubt here look at here now this is a uh, Two work pieces, friends. Here you can consider. I am going to produce a butt joint by using. It is a square butt joint. It is a square butt joint. You can remember, my dear friends, where seven mm is the thickness of this. Seven uh, mm thick steel plates are placed. Five mm gap, uh, root gap between the two work pieces. What five mm? Now I am going to fill the gap between the two work pieces by melting the filler material by melting this base metal. I am going to fill this one. Now this is a weld joint, friends. So it is a square butt joint, square butt joint. So what is the area of this weld bead here? Area of this weld bead here is very simply root gap, gap between the two work pieces multiplied by what thickness? That is five into seven mm. It will be equal to thirty-five mm square. Thirty-five mm square. We can consider area. You may be getting doubt. Can you please remember this one? So remaining all these values are given here. Then you can find out what the current. He is asking about what current. So if you substitute this particular equation, friends, here melting efficiency will be given by what friends here melting efficiency equal to point three. Heat required to melt is ten joules per mm cube. So voltage he has given thirty volts. You can use this voltage. Current, please look at friends. The current here we need to find out the current I. So area is thirty five. Welding speed he has given five mm per second, right? Heat transfer efficiency is how much? Point eight. Point eight. So from here we need to find out what current. We need to find out what current. How much current you are getting? Two forty three point zero five. Somebody is getting right one fifty five. That's wrong. Please check it, my dear friends. Two forty three point zero five is correct. Two forty three point zero five amps. Is the current you can please consider? Two forty three point zero five amperes is the right, right? Is the correct? Now we look at friends here. In this particular one, he is asking current here. Next time friends here, some sometimes they may ask to find out voltage. 
Sometimes they used to find out uh, area. Sometimes they may be asking welding speed. Sometimes directly they will ask melting efficiency. Can you find this? Please remember this particular equation. Please remember this particular equation. Okay, this is very very important equation. You have to remember. Okay, simple equation, but generally questions are coming with respect to this one. Please check the units. What is the numerator units? What is the denominator units? Please check it. Which units we have to substitute? With respect to this one, number of times questions are coming, right? Please remember this one. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Can you please look at friends? This is a good question. Please look at here. Two plates are joined by DC arc welding using linear power source characteristics. Read the question carefully. Linear power source characteristics. With the open circuit voltage of 80, short circuit current of 160 amperes, arc length is 4 mm, transfer speed is 150 centimeters per minute, heat transfer efficiency is 85 percent, voltage ca arc length characteristics V equal to 20 plus 1.5 L, then the heat input to the workpiece will be, and the heat input to the workpiece will be heat supplied means, heat input to the workpiece means what? Heat supplied. What are the units of the heat supplied is asking? Please try to remember this point. Heat supplied is asking is so many watts. So many watts is asking. It's not uh, joules. Joules per mm cube is not asking. Is asking in so many watts. So please re remember this point, friends. Here. <coughs> look at here. So how to solve this question, friends? Please look at this interesting question. And here, <coughs> heat supplied equation, friends, here, in heat supplied equation, there are three equations, friends, I will write. If you want to get the units are in so many watts, so many watts you, you want to require, I can say V <coughs> I multiplied by heat transfer efficiency. So units are so many watts, heat supplied. <coughs> Just voltage current multiplied by heat transfer efficiency. Okay? Right. Now, sometimes uh, if you want to find out heat supplied in, uh, please think of V into I by small v multiplied by heat transfer efficiency, the units are joules per mm per unit length. Heat supplied per unit length, I can use this formula. Just now we are discussing heat supplied per unit volume, V into I by area welding speed multiplied by heat transfer efficiency. This is joules per mm cube. Please remember this point, friends. Here, these three equations are saying heat supplied only. These three equations are heat supplied only. Please remember this point. But the units are different. So this is so many watts. That is joules per second. This is joules per mm per unit length. This is joules per mm cube per unit volume. Now, first statement is asking now here because the units here mentioned is what so many watts. And my dear friends, here in this uh, heat supplied equation, voltage and current always we need to find out Vt and It, power source voltage and power source current we have to substitute, not open circuit voltage and open short circuit current. He has given 80 volts is open circuit voltage. I can think of 160, it is a short circuit current. It is a short circuit current. Don't use open circuit voltage and short circuit current. We need to find out what? We need to find out what? Vt and It, power source voltage and power source current. Vt and means, can I say transformer? Transformer voltage and transformer current, we need to find out. And is mentioned, friends, it is a linear power source characteristics. Linear power source characteristics. For linear power source characteristics, what is a stable arc? Stable arc will be equal to Vt will be equal to Va. Vt will be equal to Va. Stable arc generation condition because as mentioned it is a linear power source characteristics. Find Vt and It first, then you can use heat supplied equation. That is very very important. Okay. Right. Now we know friends here from this equation. Please think of here this equation friends here and we may be getting doubt. So sometimes they are mentioning in terms of arc length mm, sometimes they are mentioning in centimeters, we have to consider which one. If the problem, if there is a centimeter, they will give an arc length in centimeter. If nothing is mentioned, we have to consider in mm only. But sir, how to remember this? Please look at here. If L is in centimeter, this value will be not 1.5, it may be 15. 
a 20 like this. If L is in mm, it is a very small value, but generally we can say V A equal to A plus B L A, we are considering friends. Arc length, arc voltage relationship is given by this one. Arc voltage, arc length. So please think of A and B are what? Constants. So if arc length in centimeters, B value will be different. If arc length is in mm, B value will be different. So here nothing is given, it is mm. So by default, it is mm. In previous problem, he has mentioned centimeter, you can consider centimeter. If nothing is mentioned, it is mm. But generally in the question, they will mention where arc length in mm, arc length in centimeter, it will be given in the problem. Okay? Right, please observe this point. Now if you look at fence here, is given arc length uh, mm, please. Arc length mm is already given. So I am going to substitute VA will be equal to 20 plus 1.5 into 4. So how much you are getting fence here? This is 26 volts. And we know that friends, the relationship between VT will be equal to V0 minus IT by IS multiplied by V0. This equation is there now. Please remember this equation friends here. Please remember this equation. <coughs> VT equal to V0 minus IT by IS into V0. Okay. I think please look at uh, this one. Now, if you want to remember this, uh, this equation friends here, I can write here this one. This is a V, this is I, right? So this is, please think of friends, V naught, this is what, IS. So this X intercept, Y intercept equation I am going to use. So that what is the X intercept? I by IS plus V by V naught will be equal to what? 1. Maximum voltage at current will be 0, it is open circuit voltage. Maximum current at voltage will be 0, that is called short circuit current IS. So X intercept, Y intercept equation you are giving, this is a, uh, uh, no, uh, transformer, current transformer voltage we are using, this equation we are getting, from here I am going to get this particular equation. So Vt will be equal to V0, what is the V0 value as given friends? V0 I think 62, oh, 80, 160, right. It is 80, IT, we need to find out, this is 160 multiplied by 80. So we know friends here from this equation, can I use Vt equal to Va, right? So what is Vt? 80 minus It by 160 into 80 will be equal to Va, that is 26 volts. From here, can I find It value? I will find It value. Anybody got It values? How much friends? Yeah, It value you have to find. IT equal to 108, 108 amps, correct. Then you can find out heat supplied now, heat supplied you can find out, heat supplied equal to voltage that is 26 volts multiplied by current 108 into heat transfer efficiency anything is given, if it is given you can use it otherwise you can neglect that value. Arc length uh, travel speed is not required, heat transfer efficiency is 85 percent yes given. Sorry. Eighty five percent yes given. We can use this one. Point eight five. So V into I multiplied by point eight five so that I am going to get so many joules per second, so many watts. So what is the answer you are getting, friends? Two three eight six point eight. Very good. Two three eight six point eight joules per second are so many watts joules per second are so many watts you are going to get. Please check it. Yes, all, all of you are getting same answer, 2386.8 watts, right? So here friends, uh, this is, uh, so sometimes they may ask joules per second also. Joules per second are so many watts we can consider, right? So my dear friends, here you have to remember this equation, once again I am saying here, in uh, joules per second are so many watts means this formula. Heat supplied per unit length means V into I by small v multiplied by heat transfer efficiency. Joules per mm cube means V into I by area, welding speed, heat transfer efficiency. Please check the units. Please check the units. Okay. <coughs> right, this one. Yeah, this uh, is a theory question, friends. Uh, you can look at here. 5 liters of acetylene is consumed from the cylinder for welding of a mild steel.
how many liters of oxygen is consumed from oxygen cylinder it is a simple question please look at in this particular uh, now the cylinder uh, in a gas welding technique how many liters of acetylene will be consumed from the acetylene cylinder same volume will be consumed from oxygen also because uh, one volume of uh, acetylene one volume of oxygen will be consumed from the oxygen cylinder remaining 1.5 volumes of oxygen will be consumed from atmosphere because for complete combustion of one uh, unit of uh, one volume of what we can say uh, acetylene 2.5 moles of oxygen will be required in which one uh, mole is consumed from oxygen cylinder remaining 1.5 moles of oxygen will be consumed from where atmosphere and moreover he is saying that mild steel mild steel means i can say friends it is a uh, neutral flame we are going to use for joining of mild steel i am going to use neutral flame where oxygen acetylene consumption will be same so 5 liters of acetylene is consumed from acetylene cylinder 5 liters of oxygen will be consumed from oxygen cylinder now next uh, remaining volume can be consumed from where atmosphere remaining volume can be consumed from atmosphere okay yes very good if nothing please look at friends here mild steel is given then we will consider it's a neutral flame please remember here for sometimes if the metal is not given unless otherwise mentioned it is a neutral flame please observe unless otherwise mentioned it is a neutral flame you have to consider temperature is also friends if temperature is also if uh, temperature of the flame they are asking if nothing is mentioned it is a neutral flame it is also neutral flame yes given mild steel mild steel is uh, joined by neutral flame even if the metal is not given also you can consider it is a neutral flame only okay so 5 liters are consumed from here remaining now please think of friends uh, 7.5 can be consumed from where atmosphere Okay, na? this point. Now move on to this uh, next question, friends. Uh, now this is uh, related to what is that? Uh, resistance uh, spot welding. A spot welding of two steel sheets, uh, each the uh, two mm thickness is carried out by passing a current to the electrode. The time for current supply is 0 0.0625 seconds, and the diameter of the nugget is six root to t. Please observe this one. Diameter of the nugget as given is six root to t. Yes, given in this. Uh, sometimes uh, directly the diameter is given diameter of the electrode diameter of the nugget both will be same under ideal case if they are not given d equal to 6 root t it is given the problem itself where t is the thickness of the plate in mm thickness of the sheet or plate the current supplied we have to find out so as given latent heat resistance is given density of this metal is given so we can easily find out this question friends here now simple little bit simple calculations are required here you can observe now two sheets friends here 2 mm thickness of the sheets we need to consider here and he has not mentioned anything related to indentation so i can consider total height of this nugget will be considered so this is a nugget i am going to consider so what is the height of the nugget here 2 times thickness by neglecting indentation 2 into 2 it is 4 mm is the height okay diameter equal to 6 root to t 6 root to 2 you can consider friends here how much you are getting this is uh, 8 point 8.48 8.48 right mm i am going to consider okay na? right now you can find out volume of the nugget pi by 4 d square multiplied by height pi by 4 d square that is 8.48 whole square multiplied by height is 4 mm so what is the volume please think of here 226.28 226.08 mm cube is the volume so if you know the volume can i find uh, mass mass equal to volume into density volume 226.08 into 10 power minus 9 is the volume density as given friends so how much 8000 kg per meter cube so what is the mass you are getting please look at here mass is uh, 0.00 point double zero one eight zero eight kg can you please check it this answer is correct or not can you please check this answer one eight zero eight right kg volume into density this mm cube we are converting into meter cube because uh, density is given kg per meter cube mass is given then we can find out friends here heat required to melt will be equal to mc delta t plus ml please look at this is a sensible heat this is a latent heat 
but sensible heat data is not given specific heat delta t melting temperature ambient temperature data is not given so if data is not given we can neglect this so how you neglect this one see if nothing is given with respect to this uh, temperature difference of specific heat then sensible heat will be neglected only i will consider latent heat m into l i am going to consider so mass is 0.001808 into latent heat is given friends uh, 1600 please look at here kilojoules per kg so you can convert them into joules friends here so this will be equal to how much please check it out multiplied by 1000 i am going to consider so heat required to melt heat required to melt you are getting 2893 2893.24 joules so can you please check it it's correct 2893.824 8 to 2 4 8 to 2 4 joules right this one then one more opening we have to remember this point friends here regarding heat supplied we are going to consider friends here heat supplied will be equal to i square rt so current we need to find out i square resistance is 200 micro ohm 10 power minus 6 Time is point zero six two five. Correct. What is the time he has given? Please check it. Point zero six two five. Right. Now this is so many joules here. Also we are going to get, and this is a uh, micro ohm. I am converting into ohm. That is ten power minus six. Here also friends, please look at melting efficiency is not given. Losses is also not given. Then simply by neglecting the losses, I will consider heat required to melt equal to heat supplied. Sir, how you can assume like that? It's not given anything. Losses, melting efficiency is not given. Losses are not given. Then I will consider. Please look at heat required to melt equal to heat supplied by neglecting losses. Neglecting losses, I can say melting efficiency will be equal to what? Hundred percent. If nothing is given, we can assume like this, friends. Right? There is no option. We have to assume. By neglecting the losses, heat required to melt equal to heat supplied. This is a two eight nine three point eight two four will be equal to heat supplied I square two hundred into ten power minus six into point zero six two five. So from here we need to find out what current. So what is the answer, friends? Anybody? One five one two one five two one two point six two. Yeah, please check it. One five, uh, right? No, no, nine fifty is not correct. What is the current, friends? Please tell me. Small difference. One five, two one nine, two one five. Samad is getting. One five, one five, two one five amps. Can you please check it? Two one two or two one five? That depends on friends. How many fractions we are going to cancel? Right. <coughs> yes. One five two one five. Yes, yes, very good. One five two one two. Mm, very good. Right. Right. One five two one five. One five two one two. Please think of this. One. This is the current you can consider. Right. This one. Right. All of you are getting same answer. Can you please? So if nothing is given with respect to losses, we can consider heat required to melt equal to heat supplied by neglecting what losses? By neglecting losses. Yes. Next question, please think of friends. Uh, in projection welding, two projections are welded at a time with a voltage of two volts, assuming contact resistance of 200 micro ohm for each projection. For each projection, 200 micro ohm is the resistance. The rate of heat generated in kilojoules per second at the contact is. Rate of heat generated at the contact. What are the units here? Kilojoules per second. That is also very very important. Now it is a projection welding, friends. Please listen carefully. Now we can think of uh, right, friends. Here uh, projection welding means like this. We will consider. No, right. This one. No, here, friends. Ah, uh, we can consider this is a uh, no two sheets here, and we are expecting, friends, a uh, two nuggets here, and we are going to supply the current by using what. 
two electrodes here, right? A large size electrodes we are using. Using the electrode, I am going to supply the current, right? So here two nuggets are there. Two nuggets are there here. So this is one nugget. This is one nugget here. So here we are supplying the current at the same time, so that the circuit is a parallel circuit, friends. Here means if you draw the circuit, it is like this. Let us say this is R, R1, R, and we are going to supply the current. Current we are going to supply at the same time. Let us say R1, R2. It is a parallel circuit. It is not a series. We can't add R1 plus R2. Here we need to find out equivalent circuit fields. Equivalent circuit, equivalent resistance where current is supplied like this. So if it is a parallel circuit, R equivalent. R equivalent we have to find out. So what is the R equivalent friends here generally? Because if we are, we are assuming R1 equal to R2, both are same, 200 micro ohm only. That's why it is R by 2. Parallel circuit I can consider. Now we are considering now this one friends. 1 by R equivalent will be equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. Here R1 equal to R2 will be equal to 200 micro ohm. Okay, na? So I am going to substitute this one. So this is uh, 200 by 2. Uh, it will be equal to 100 micro ohm. 100 micro ohm is the resistance. Friends. It is a parallel circuit in case of projection welding because we are supplying the current. For these two resistances also, we are going to supply the current. The current will be distributed to this particular resistance. So equivalent resistance we have to find out that is 100 micro ohm by using the parallel circuit. Right? Now, now, next question, friends. This is the first concept. Now, we, we need to find out heat generator or heat supplied is I square RT. I square RT, where R equivalent I am going to find the friends here. R equivalent I am going to find here. Right? Now, if you think of friends here, heat generation is I square RT, but here the units we are getting is so many joules. So many joules or kilojoules if you divide by 1000. But we required kilojoules per second we need to get and he has not given time. He has not given time. So, heat generation I am going to consider friends here. Heat generation dot I am going to produce. Means uh, I am going to find out here heat generation is uh, dot HG dot will be equal to heat generation by time. Time will be equal to I square R. I am going to this, this time I am going to make it this one like this. So, that heat generation per unit time. HD dot you can consider friends. Uh, heat generation is so many joules. So HD dot heat generation per unit time will be equal to I square R. This is divided by time we can consider. I square R we can consider. But he has not given, please think of friends here, I, V equal to I R, I can consider I equal to V by R. So this is V square by R square multiplied by R. So this is V square by R I am going to consider. Yes, can you please look at here, friends? Now, heat generation per unit time. Heat generation per unit time. Please look at this is HD dot. Heat generation per unit time will be equal to V square by R we are going to consider. So, this is how much, friends, here? V square is 2 whole square. R is 100 micro ohm. 10 power minus 6, eh, na? Minus 6. I am going to divide this by 1000 because I want to get so many kilojoules friends here. Kilojoules per second. So, divided by 1000. Divided by 1000. So, what is the heat generation you are getting here? Please look at here. If you simplify this one, you are getting friends here. This is 4. 4. And how much you are getting this point? Please check it here. This is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is 6. So, how much you are getting friends here? I think it is a 40, 40 kilojoules per second. Can you please check it is correct? Anyone? Yes, yes. Very good, very good. I think you are very fast friends, my dear friends. Very fast. In calculation part, you are very, very fast. Yes, I think all of you. Rohit, right, Suraj, Shubham, very good, very good. Raj, Amit. Om, everybody, everybody is getting, say, you know, a good answer and you are giving 
answers are very very quickly now that is required in gate examination two points generally we will discuss friends speed and accuracy both are required for you speed and accuracy both will be there then you will be the master you will get good rank in gate examination speed is required accuracy is also very very important please observe okay so here friends it is kilo joules per second if kilo joules means please think of it is i square rt i square rt so heat generation per time joules per second joules per second means i square r okay na your time is not given sir time is not given how to calculate please remember this equations units balancing is very very important units balancing is very very important yeah <laughs> now increasing harder of heat affected zone please think of friends uh, uh, for heat affected zone concept uh, i am going to consider one simple equation here please look at if the heat concentration on the work piece per unit time that is a uh, welding techniques with different rate of heat input heat input per given time so we have discussed friends heat flux means heat flux means uh, per unit area heat flux means uh, watts per mm square that is heat flux and this is a heat generation on the work piece per unit time that is rate of heat input is very very high we are heating the metal at a faster rate we are melting the metal at a faster rate so naturally heat affected zone will be less because you are concentrating the heat on the work piece per minimum time you are melting there is no much time for getting what heat affected zone this heat affected zone will be very very less if the heat concentration on the work piece will be very very high so i have compared this one friends low rate of heat input heat affected zone will be very high because slowly we are heating the material slowly we are heating the material more heat transfer transfer for more time heat affected zone jyada hota hai next moderate rate of heat input heat affected zone is moderate high rate of heat input heat affected zone will be less you can remember this one friends electron beam welding plasma arc welding laser beam welding spot welding and seam welding technique uh, heat concentration is very very high for small time heat affected zone will be very very less then later we can consider here friends later we can consider here now in this also you are getting one doubt friends please look at here now because you can look at here now in electron beam welding please look at here heat affected zone will be very very less so first i will write electron beam welding what is that is asking increasing order of heat affected zone increasing order of heat affected zone means uh, i will like this friends where high heat affected zone will be less please think of here i can say submerged arc welding heat affected zone will be more it is greater because area of this weld we are going to melt is very very high weld pool size will be very very high area of the weld bead is very very high that's why it will take more time to solidify so submerged arc welding technique will be having more heat affected zone here the next one friends here mig welding to then third next one is what resistance welding that is four the next one is what electron beam welding one so electron beam welding is very very less heat affected zone submerged arc welding we can expect more heat affected zone so if you want to answer this question friends yes sir. if you want to answer this question you can remember this particular one with respect to heat input so here shielded metal arc welding technique submerged arc welding gas tungsten arc welding gma gas metal arc welding submerged arc welding is more when the remaining things will be less okay right so <coughs> right now we'll move to the next topic friends here metal forming in metal forming we will discuss the questions with respect to rolling friends in a single pass rolling operation a sheet of dimensions 125 mm friends these units are mm only right is reduced to 20 mm thickness roll of a diameter 250 mm and rotate at 200 rpm if the sheet thickness at the neutral plane is 25 mm the rotate the ratio of forward and backward slip is <coughs> is asking the ratio of uh, no we can say forward to backward slip ratio is asking okay right now if you want to solve this one friends here very simple question right this one now i will explain the concept i think uh, one minute i will uh, draw this rolling operation friends so please look at here
right so two rollers are rotating now work piece is passing through this one right once you attach this one this work piece is passing continuously without any external force here because you no know, this is uh, because of the friction between the roller and work piece this is called the self entry self entry or condition for self entry now look at friends here this is the rollers we can say initial thickness of this work piece is h not initial velocity of this work piece is b is we can say v not now at the exit i can say thickness is hf thickness is final thickness uh, uh, final velocity vf and you can observe friends here this is a roller a roller at the center of the roller and this is a uh, please think of initially and if you look at friends here <coughs> now this is actually arc of contact we can consider in the arc of contact at this point friends here that is a neutral plane or neutral point we can consider neutral plane or neutral point we will consider friends so what is the specialty of this neutral plane or neutral please think of initially if the roller is rotating at a given please think of velocity vr friends velocity of the roller is what vr so initially if the work piece is passing initial velocity of the work piece will be less initial velocity of the roller will be more i can say velocity of the roller is greater than what velocity of the work piece initially that's why this uh, due to the high sp uh, rotational speed of the roller work piece will be dragged into this particular rollers work piece will be dragged into this particular rollers at the exit uh, at the exit i can say velocity of this work piece will be more than what velocity of the roller velocity of the roller so here please think of friends initially velocity of the roller is more exit uh, we can think of at the inlet velocity of the roller is more at the exit velocity of the work piece will be high in between if you think of friends at neutral point please observe here at neutral point velocity of the roller velocity of the work piece will be same velocity of the roller and velocity of the work piece will be same at the neutral point so at the neutral point if the velocities will be same there is no slip slip is not there so at neutral point i can say velocity of the roller and velocity of the work piece will be same no slip condition we will consider no slip condition that is at neutral point okay na this one so if you look at friends here at this neutral point we can say no slip condition and the velocity of the roller and velocity of the work piece both will be same at the neutral point we can consider so initially we can think of roller velocity is more when compared to work piece at the exit uh, work piece velocity will be more than what roller because thickness is reducing means velocity will be getting increased in between at the arc of contact friends here at the point uh, please think of no at the arc of contact velocity of the roller and velocity of the work piece both will be same that is called what neutral plane or neutral point both velocities will be same work piece velocity and you no know, what is that velocity of the roller both will be same and if you think of friends here this region this is called we can think of friends leading zone this is called leading zone this is called what lagging zone this is called lagging zone this total area friends we can consider it is a deformation zone this is called deformation zone so please up to this neutral point this is called lagging and this is called what leading in the leading zone we are expecting friends here forward slip forward slip will be in the leading zone here vf minus vr by vr we can consider what is vr velocity of the roller what is vf work piece velocity at the exit this is a forward slip that is in leading zone in lagging zone we are expecting friends what backward slip backward slip we are going to expect here so a backward slip is vr minus v not by vr vr minus v not by vr see here velocity of the roller is more initially that's why vr minus v not by vr it is backward slip forward slip in this direction vf minus vr by VR. so this is a uh, equation for forward slip and backward slip we need to find out friends here now here in rolling operation we have to remember now friends initial volume of the material final volume of the metal will be same volume of the metal will be same initially and finally also it will be same we are equating and here i am using friends continuity equation that is v not h not will be equal to vn hn at neutral point will be equal to 
v f and h f we can consider. So, here it is a velocity and we can think of height. Friends, here in this particular placing rolling operation, we are assuming that width of this workpiece will be more, it is same. Width of this workpiece will be same before rolling and after rolling, width of this workpiece will be same. Width of the workpiece will be same before and after rolling. It is a plain strain condition we are assuming. So, if you are considering width will be same, volume flow rate of the metal will be same initially and finally also it will be same. I am using continuity equation. Okay, Where width of this uh, workpiece will be the same, it is constant, we are cancelling those things. So, in place of, uh, please think of here, a uh, neutral plane, what is the velocity? V naught, H naught will be equal to velocity of the roller, height of this neutral plane, V F and H F we are going to consider. And in this problem, he has given friends, uh, initial thickness H naught will be equal to 25 mm, final thickness will be equal to 20 mm, right? And he has given friends, uh, neutral plane, the thickness is given, please think of what, neutral plane, the height, the thickness is what, 22 mm he has given. So, from this ratios, we can find out friends, uh, velocity ratio, so that we can find backward slip and forward slip can be calculated, okay? Right. So, I need to find out friends here, V naught by V R here. So, V naught by V R, V naught by V R will be equal to H n by H n by H naught, I am going to consider, H n by H naught equal to how much friends? H n is 22 by H naught will be equal to 25. Okay. This is a, a one condition. The next here, we need to find out V f by V r. So, V f by V r, V f by V r, V f by V r equal to H n by H n by H f I am going to consider. What is H n? 22. H f is how much? 20. This ratios I am going to find out. Now, from here, you can simplify this one, friends here. You can simplify this one. Now, I am going to find out first backward slip. So, backward slip will be equal to backward slip will be equal to here, friends. 1 minus V naught by V R. 1 minus V naught by V R. This is 1 minus, what is V naught by V R is 22 by 25, 22 by 25. So, this is uh, tw 3, uh, 25 minus 20 means 3 by 25. This ratio you can keep it, friends. 3 by 25, backward slip. Uh, slip. So, what is a forward slip just now we are discussing? Forward slip. Forward slip will be equal to, uh, what is that? V f by V r minus 1. V f by V R minus 1. So, V F is, friends, uh, uh, what is that ratio? V F by V R is 22 by 20 minus 1. So, how much you are getting, hence here? <laughs> this is uh, 2 by 22 minus 20, 2 by 10, 2 by 20, sorry, right? 2 by 20 means 1 by 10, correct? It is 1 by 10. Now, he is asking, what is the ratio? Anybody got? 5 by 6, very good, very good. 5 by 6 is correct. Please look at it. And he is asking the ratio for which to which one, friends? Let's look at here. He is asking the ratio of, the ratio of forward to backward slip. Forward to backward slip, we need to find out. So, forward to backward slip. Ratio of forward to backward slip. Forward slip. Backward slip, backward slip. Forward slip is how much, friends? 1 by 10 into this is 25 by 3. <coughs> okay. 5, 5 is a 5, 2 is a. This is 5 by 6. This is correct. 5 by 6. <coughs> 5 by 6. Please observe friends, this one. Ratio of forward slip to backward slip. Ratio of forward slip to, this is 1 by 10. Forward slip, 1 by 10. Backward slip, this is a 3 by 25. 25 by 3. Okay. Please check it, this one. 5 by 6. 
this ratios friends we can uh, write yeah this uh, observe this is a continuity equation you have to remember continuity equation you have to remember at neutral plane velocity of the roller and velocity of the workpiece both will be same 5 by 6 yes yes good 5 by 6 is a correct friends please check it now you are finding for which to which one please check it whether you are backward slip to forward slip because the, he has given find the ratio uh, between forward slip to backward slip forward slip to backward slip okay friends with respect to rolling we can expect one question we can, with respect to rolling we are expecting one question okay this is with respect to forward slip and backward slip and we are finding friends this ratio please look at uh, a length of arc of contact is what r delta h under root arc of length length of arc of contact is r delta h so tan theta will be equal to delta h by r delta h by r we can think of so tan theta equal to mu mu square r will be equal to delta h maximum maximum possible reduction maximum possible reduction means uh, how much reduction uh, delta h maximum means uh, delta h maximum equal to h naught minus hf h naught maximum possible reduction for self entry for unaided entry for self entry maximum possible reduction is mu square r tan theta equal delta h by r contact length equal to r delta h this formula please remember and power calculation also torque power right these things also very very important with respect to rolling i hope you can able to solve this one vivek i think uh, some of them are getting 0.83 how you are getting this one i think this calculation is correct or not please check it this calculation is correct or not 5 by 6 it is correct now Please check it, friends. Please check these answers. Some of them are answers are not matching, but some of them are getting five by six. Please check it. Please check it. This uh, calculation part. Okay, right. Now I will move on to the next question, friends. Right, next question. Correct. Yes. Good. Right. Now you can think of friends. This is uh, with respect to right uh, forging. Please generally forging friends uh, formulas, uh, lengthy formulas we have discussed, but those things are not required here. But simple questions are coming. We will discuss one question friends here. Please look at a strip of metal with the initial dimension is forged between two flat dies to a final size of this one. If the coefficient of friction between the job and the die is this one mu. Which type of friction will act on the work die interface considering middle of the strip as a origin? You can observe friends here. This you can observe closely here. Friends here, this is a concept of a slab rectangular bar forging. Two things we have discussed, no? Le rectangular bar forging and axisymmetric forging. Right? So here, if in case of this one friends, we to find out which type of friction, generally friends, what we can consider. <coughs> Let us say this is the length of this particular work piece, rectangular work piece here. We are assuming the length, the total length is what? 2L. Total length is 2L. Now at the middle we are considering friends at x equal to 0. And at a distance, uh, please think of this is uh, a dx we are considering at a distance of x we can consider friends here. And we are analyzing for the two total length. But up to this portion we can say what from 0 to L we are considering friends. This is up to 0 to L we are considering here. Okay, na? The solutions, please check it, friends. Yeah. This is L we are considering. So total length is what? 2L. Total length is what? 2L we can consider. So only half of this portion we are considering. And in force calculation, we are multi because it is a mirror image, na? we are calculating here. Right? Now please look at here. Now he is asking friends what type of friction will be there? Sliding friction, sticking friction, or both will be there. So this depends on what? Sticking length. So we want to find out sticking length. So to find out the sticking length, friends, what is that? Excess sticking length will be equal to L minus H by 2 mu Ln 1 by 
to mu this is a this formula you have to remember friends there is no option this formula is in case of rectangular bar forging you have to remember this one now based on this excess value we can say whether sliding is there no we can think of sticking will be there or both will be there we have to consider okay at the center generally sticking will be there at the outside sliding will be there because at the center and the side we can say temperature will be same but at the center pressure will be maximum that's why sticking chances will be more at the center at the outside we are expecting friends sliding right this point next point please observe here if you want to find out friends here now these dimensions if you look at closely friends here these slab dimensions are like this friends here you can look at here uh, this is very important uh, please look at here <coughs> what is that the slab dimension is height is 28 mm now width is please think of sorry the length is 28 mm the width friends this one width is uh, what is that he has given 160 and we are applying compressive type of loading fence forging means it's a compressive type of loading compressive type of loading and by applying this one by applying the pressure on both sides by using the a pair of dies we are reducing this one such that what happened friends here height is reducing and length will be getting increased which will remain same please look at friends here width plus the width will be remaining same 160 will be the please think of what width 160 will be the width which is a constant b equal to 160 mm which is constant because it is a plane strain condition plane strain condition b equal to constant b equal to constant it is a plane strain condition it is a plane strain condition b equal to constant so we have to identify 160 160 same means it is a b width will be same it's a plane strain condition if the material is not allowed to move in a single direction any direction that is called plane strain condition if the metal is allowed to move in all direction then it is called a plane stress condition if the metal is restricted to move in a given direction if the metal is restricted to move in a given direction it is a plane strain condition where deformation along this direction will be zero so b equal to constant 160 mm it is a constant here height is please think of 28 mm length is length is 28 here please but after forging after forging the slab will become like this friends the slab will become what like this so what is happening now this is 112 this is how much you are getting 7 mm and width is what same this is 160 it will be same only height is 7 this is what length now always we need to consider this h and this l are final dimensions in forging calculations always we have to consider final dimensions forging calculations we have to consider all final dimensions we have to consider okay now this one right now please look at friends here this is a height so i, I will write here height equal to 7 mm two length friends are two times length we are considering no initial two length uh, two times length we are considering here this is l this l 2 l will be equal to 1 1 2 l will be equal to what 56 i am going to consider and width will be same in both the cases width is same that is 160 mm only and he has given coefficient of friction mu will be equal to 0 0.08 so by substituting here what we are getting please look at friends here in excess equation that is a sticking length where please look at here now sticking length means let us say friends here up to this one sticking and sliding both will be there at which length please look at friends from the center at which length at which length the friction will be changing from sticking to sliding at which length the friction will be changing from sticking to sliding that is called what excess that is called what excess okay now i am going to find out that please think of excess value here so to find out this excess please look at here excess will be equal to l minus what is l here 56 minus h value that is 7 by 2 mu 0 0.08 ln 1 by 2 mu 0 0.08 so this formula friends there is no option we have to remember this formula up to gate examination sticking length you can uh, remember in case of slab and uh, uh, axisymmetric forging also you have to remember the sticking length so if you substitute this if you simplify this one's excess you are getting is how much friends you are getting what is the value it is a how much you are getting very good 217 
how much you are getting 136 now please check it friends how much you are getting yes how much you are getting if you are please think of 56 you are getting this is a ln what is the value of excess what is the value of excess here 136 no please check it anybody how you are getting 31.86 yaar ln 1 by this is minus na please check it yes please uh, try to simplify this one are how you are getting here yeah 136.17 136.1754 mm you are going to get now ln 1 by something no you are getting minus 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 plus 56 plus something no you are getting this value 56 is there now l minus this one now look at friends here we are getting the three condition friends excess uh, please look at here if excess v is uh, greater than l no please think of sliding only sticking will be there If excess is less than 0, sliding, only sliding will be there. Uh, if, please think of uh, 0 less than excess less than L, means uh, both sticking and sliding both sticking and sliding means uh, from 0 to excess sticking from excess to L sliding both will be there yes I think this concept is correct Yes, if excess is greater than 0, if excess is greater than 0, only sticking will be there. Excess is less than 0, sliding will be there. If 0 and L in between, excess value is there, then both sticking and sliding both will be there. Okay, 0 to excess sticking, excess to L sliding will be there. Now, please, I think you have to refer the notes, friends, one more time. Right, please refer the notes. ln 1 by 0.16 how much you are getting here are a negative na negative yeah please check it friends ln 1 by 0.16 yeah how much you are getting is a negative or positive excess value you are getting this negative value how much you are getting yes yeah please look at here yeah please check it friends here what is the excess value please tell me here no but this condition friends please look at here condition is this one if excess is greater than l only sticking will be there if excess is less than 0, there is no sticking, only sliding will be there. 0 to excess L, both sticking and sliding, both will be there. Both will be there. What is the excess value? Please tell me now. What is the excess value? Minus 24.175. Okay, good. Minus 24.175. Minus 24.175. So, if you are getting negative value, x is uh, less than 0 means uh, it is absurd value. If this uh, x is minus 24.17 means it is a absurd value. Means, uh, please look at here, we are considering x equal to 0 here. x equal to 0 here. x equal to less than 0 means uh, there is no slick sticking at all. General sticking will be there at the center, no? If x is less than 0, it is a negative value means uh, it is absurd value because x is less than 0 is not there. So, there is no sticking at all, only sliding will be there. 
only sliding will be there. Can you please look at here? I am returning, please think of, right? <coughs> now, please look at friends. So, this is very important. Please remember. If excess is greater than L, sticking will be there. Excess is less than 0, only what will be there? Sliding will be there. So, you are getting negative value, no? Minus 24.175, correct? Yes, minus 24.175, everybody is getting, right? This one. If you are getting negative, what I can say, friends, here is only sliding only sliding will be there sliding friction will exist right so if this uh, excess value is in between 0 and l both sticking and sliding will be there if this excess value is between 0 and l we can say both sticking and sliding will be there if excess is greater than l we can say sticking will be there okay right very good friends yeah please look at right now please look at friends this concept uh, right if this is a negative value, I can say sliding friction will be there. So, this please simplify this one, friends. I think a small uh, simplification correction is there, right? It is a negative 24.175. Okay, please observe. Now, this is a uh, reference. And the same concept we are going to use, friends, uh, for this one. <coughs> In case of uh, axisymmetric forging, now this is uh, sticking friction will be equal to R minus uh, H by 2 mu ln 1 by root 3 mu <coughs> it is according to one minus theory one minus theory rs will be equal to r minus h by 2 mu ln <coughs> 1 by 2 mu it is according to what trescas theory <coughs> trescas theory right so this uh, two formulas we have to use friends one is for one minus second one is trescas for ductile materials two theories of values we are using one minus and trescas in a please think of in case of uh, rectangular bar forging it is a uh, only one formula we are using for both the cases also but in here we are getting this one if nothing is mentioned if nothing is mentioned you can use one minus because one minus will give better results when compared to what trescas so up to the sticking friends uh, sticking length uh, sticking friction which friction we have to consider up to this you can expect the questions in gate examination the force calculations pressure calculations uh, right that uh, formulas will be used in uh, conventional esc examination only because the lengthy questions will be there right now this it will take more time okay this one right now this thing of friends here this is uh, with respect to extrusion please closely observe this type of questions are more frequently coming with respect to drawing extrusion ideal case without friction ideal case this type of questions are more frequently coming can you please look at friends here and extruding uh, in extruding a cylindrical billet of length 200 mm from an initial diameter of 25 mm to a final diameter of 20 assume the flow stress at the metal is 250 mega pascals the ideal plastic work involved in extrusion will be is asking what ideal plastic work work done is asking friends work done is asking please closely observe here so please uh, think of friends here if nothing is mentioned if nothing is mentioned i am assuming it is a forward extrusion process which process forward extrusion process so this is a billet so we are applying the force through the ram we are applying the force it is a forward extrusion process so where this we can consider friends the billet length uh, we can consider here this is l this is l now this is through the die the workpiece will be coming out of this particular die it is coming like this okay so the initial diameter is this one please think of friends say initial diameter how much you are saying friends this is let us say d naught initial diameter d naught final diameter will be equal to df we can consider okay now this one it is a forward extrusion process length length of the billet will be l we can consider friends here okay now without a friction if you want to find out friends extrusion stress i can consider it will be equal to sigma naught ln a naught by af i am going to consider without friction ideal case friends without friction ideal case if you want to find out uh, extrusion stress sigma is extrusion stress equal to sigma naught ln a naught by af where sigma naught is a flow stress flow stress here please observe friends here now one important point here flow stress sigma naught will be equal to 250 mega pascals here 250 mega pascals because here in this problem he has not given please look at friends n strain hardening coefficient sorry 
strain hardening exponent strength coefficient is not given strain hardening exponent strength coefficient is not given here okay if the strength coefficient and strain hardening exponents will be given then we are going to find out sigma not equal to sigma average that will be equal to k e power n by n plus 1 we are going to find k e power n by n plus 1 average flow stress we are going to find in the problem if n and k values will be given we are going to find out like this okay now here he has not given in friends here uh, simply flow stress is directly given 250 mega pascals directly we can consider here and please observe n and k values will be given i am using this average flow stress formula ke power n by n plus 1 in case of rolling in case of extrusion in case of drying i am going to use this formula but in case of forging please my dear friends if the compressive type of loading is using forging because the impact load will be applied forging the time of applying the load is very very small that's why where we are using sigma not equal to sigma flow stress will be equal to ke power n only it is in case of what forging forging if you are using compressive type of loading first point compressive type of loading i am applying and the load applied will be with very very short span of time like forging i can use sigma not equal to sigma flow stress equal to ke power n where you can say n and k will be there but except that forging rolling next extrusion in drawing all this operation if n and k values will be given i am going to use this butler formula but in this problem he has not mentioned n and k values means uh, is a simple case where the metal is behaving elastic and plastic simply the metal is uh, right elastic and plastic so i can consider this one friends here so if you want to find out sigma e this one so if you want to find out the force uh, extrusion force okay, sigma e multiplied by which area where you are applying the load load applied will be initially i am going to consider initial area i am going to consider what initial area please closely observe friends this is a force now is asking what the plastic work done work done means what work done will be equal to force multiplied by length how much length this particular plunger is ram is moving how much length work done will be equal to force into distance moved distance moved by the plunger will be equal to what l that will gives what work done that will gives what work done so work done equal to force into you can say length i am going to find out force into length i am going to find out so work done will be equal to please think of friends this is a uh, sigma e sigma e is how much friends here 250 250 right uh, ln ln a not uh, please think of in terms of uh, diameter means i will consider all square that is 25 by 20 all square pi by 4 d square na this one ln all square multiplied by please think of this is uh, right a not what is the a not friends here pi by 4 d not square that is 25 all square so this is a uh, friends here a mega pascal so this is a uh, newton per mm square this mm square will be getting cancelled then next what we can find friends here uh, uh, this is uh, 200 mm na length is 200 mm divided by 1000 so this will gives what uh, this thing of joules actually this will be in so many joules you are going to get if you want to find out friends this is uh, actually mm i am going to convert uh, into let's uh, please think of uh, uh, divided by 1000 because meter so that you are getting what so many joules but he is asking the units are kilo joules so kilo joules so divided by one more thousand to get what kilo joules i am going to divide by one more thousand so what is the work done please tell me here work done will be equal to how much you are going to get here yes 10.953 10.95 very good 10.95 kilo joules is a work done so friends here this is a without any friction without any friction if you want to find out uh, so the extrusion stress i am going to use this factor equation so uh, with sometimes friction and now please think of uh, right uh, redundant work is given extrusion stress will be equal to sigma not 1 plus b by b right uh, this one uh, please think of friends here uh, what is that a not by af whole power b minus 
whole power b minus 1 I am going to consider. Take this equation is correct? Yes. Where b equal to mu cot alpha, mu cot alpha, mu is coefficient of friction between the die and the workpiece, alpha is semi diangle, semi diangle. Right? So, sometimes friends here, friction, right? Uh, alpha diangle is given, then if you want to find out, I can use this Butler formula, sigma e. If you know this uh, sigma e, then find out the area multiplied, so that uh, force multiplied by the work done, then you can find out this. Okay, na? please think of. If you know the same friends, uh, power also friends here, yeah, that is what uh, force uh, extrusion stress multiplied by, what is that? Velocity, extrusion velocity will give what power, so many watts. If you want to find out the power in extrusion, Fe multiplied by V, we can consider. Fe multiplied by V, we can consider. Okay? Right. <coughs> now, sometimes, friends, uh, in case of hot extrusion, please remember this point. This is very important. In case of hot extrusion, sigma E will be equal to K ln A naught by AF, we are going to consider. In case of heart extrusion, in case of heart extrusion, this point you can remember, k equal to extrusion ratio, extrusion, sorry, this is not sorry, k equal to const, extrusion constant, extrusion constant, constant, it will depend on temperature friends. In case of heart extrusion, Sometimes, if the extrusion constant will be given, simply extrusion stress equal to K multiplied by ln A naught by AF, we can consider. Extrusion stress, okay? K is a extrusion constant, it will depend on temperature. It will depend on temperature. Extrusion constant, which depends on temperature. This point you can observe, okay? Yeah. Now, this is, please think of, friends, uh, it is with respect to what? Drawing, please think of, friends, drawing. Right, I am going to please think of here. Yes, given friends here, initial diameter 20 mm is reduced to 50 mm by drawing a single pass. Speed of drawing is 120 mm per meter. Drawing operation. Semi diangle is 60 degrees. Coefficient of friction between the contact surface is 0.25. Then he is asking to find out what? Uh, please think of. Uh, right, uh, work done. Right, uh, work, uh, there was that drawing, power required in drawing operation. Right. And yield strength of this metal is given 500. So, sigma naught equal to here. In this particular equation, sigma naught equal to yield strength of this material will be equal to 500 mega Pascals only. Okay? Now, he has given friction this one. This is a drawing operation. Sigma D will be equal to sigma naught, sigma naught, 1 plus B by B. Let's look at friends here, this one. It is 1 minus uh, AF by A naught all power B, AF by A naught all power B, B friends there, this is a capital B, capital B, where B equal to mu cot alpha, mu cot alpha, what is the please 0.25 cot alpha, semi diangle is how much friends, uh, diam semi diangle is 6 degrees, yes saying friends. So, B equal to mu cot alpha, how much you are getting this value, mu cot alpha, 2.378, so sigma D will be equal to sigma naught 500, 1 plus 2.378 by 2.378 into 1 minus AF ones. See, if is given areas, pi by 4 D square, pi by 4 D naught square, so, two times will be coming in terms of what diameter. So, if you consider DF, what is that friends? Uh, uh, final diameter is how much? 15 by initial diameter is 20 whole power 2 times B. What is the B value here? 2 times B. Because why 2? D square, na? D square means 2 times I am considering here. So, this is a 2.378. 2.378. So, what is the sigma D? What is the sigma d? Please tell me. Anybody has calculated? Analysis of extrusion, analysis of rolling is not there in gate examination. Analysis is not there only. Mains uh, ESC examination, it is there. 
analysis of extrusion analysis of rolling is not included only formulas is required formulas will be required so what is the sigma d friends here sigma d will be equal to 529 point 529.17 right uh, mega pascals mega pascals then we need to find out what right uh, <coughs> sig what is this kind of friends here uh, drawing force will be equal to sigma d multiplied by which area final area friends in drawing operation we are applying the force please observe through the die if the work piece is passing through the die right we are applying the force or pressure at the exit so final area we have to consider friends drawing operation no final area we have to find out so if you want to find out the power drawing force multiplied by what velocity right so power will be equal to fd that is sigma d 529.17 multiplied by pi by 4 uh, df square that is 15 square multiplied by velocity what is the velocity friends he has given velocity 120 meters per minute 120 meters per minute divided by 60 so that you are going to get uh, in terms of what is asking the units are kilowatt na kilowatt means divided by 1000 so divided by 1000 so that you are going to get kilowatt so what is the power you are getting friends what is the power what is the power 187.147 187.147 kilowatt is correct please check it any difficulty yeah so option e is uh, c <coughs> 187 option e is c very good 187 yeah yeah correct correct one eighty seven point one four seven kilowatt okay next we'll move on to the next question friends here right now the <coughs> friends here this type of questions you can observe generally theory questions are coming now in a uh, process which type of uh, stress will be acting this type of stress will be acting here we have to observe forging means friends here it is a compressive type of loading pressure will be applied pressure is always compressive so forging means compressive so one is a c forging means compression then punching punching and banking operation cutting will be there shearing up action can be takes place shearing will be there tower shear strength we are considering no right. third one wide drawing operation it is a tension wide drawing operation it is a tension fourth one friends are sheet bending bending operation sheet bending means bending will be there so what is the option friends here c d a b c d a b is correct na no? right c d a b right right good please think up so what is the process what is the you know the stress develop in this material you no know, process means we have to consider like this major portion friends major stress we can consider here no at the contact of the die there is a possibility of shear may be there die and the work piece shear may be there that is uh, you know less when compared to tension so in uh, wide drawing operation more tension will be there major stress is what tension right for a blanking operation circular disc of uh, produce the radial clearance is 0.2 and die allowance is please look at friends this type of questions are more common can you please think of the punch size will be it is which type of operation here please look at which type of operation friends it is a blanking operation or is which operation it is a blanking operation blanking operation blanking operation which is exact die size is exact die is exact die is exact die is exact okay so die size will be equal to so die will, uh, size will be equal to exact size this will be equal to how much 80 mm so we need to provide clearance on where punch size so punch size will be equal to d minus 2c plus allowance friends because he has given uh, the allowance is given this allowance we have to add for the clearance right this die allowance has to be added for clearance 
where c is a radial clearance so two times c means diametrical clearance we can consider right radial clearance is 0.2 mm he has considered okay so di allowance means it is a factor of safety it is a factor of safety that has to be added to the what clearance right allowance has to be added to this particular clearance so d minus 2c plus allowance if allowance is not given it is d minus 2c simply it is a d minus 2c only so this is 80 minus 2 into c how much friends uh, this is c is a uh, uh, real case 0.2 plus allowance is 0 0.06 so this allowance we are going to provide uh, to accommodate you know please think of some burst some extra cutting portion will be there to overcome this burst we are going to provide some extra amount of allowance it is a factor of safety so what is the punch size friends here please think of what is the punch size 79.54 79.54 mm is the punch size we can consider punch size we can consider that is 79.54 mm is the punch size we are going to consider Right. So, in blanking operation, die size is, die is exact. So, clearance is provided on the punch. Please look at fence here. One minute. Yeah, this, this is a very important question, friends. Please, up. generally, they are expecting this type of questions, friends. <laughs> bend allowance fence the bend allowance this type of question 3 mm metal sheet is to be bent at an angle of 60 degrees with a bend radius of uh, 100 mm if the stretching factor is 0.5 the bend allowance will be so this a uh, gate examination these two questions one is bending force and bend allowance uh, is a general questions we are going to expect friends here so the bend allowance uh, bend allowance bend allowance will be given by and so what is that we are getting alpha r plus kt we can consider friends right so r is what bend radius alpha is in radians friends bend angle in radians bend angle in radians r is bend radius alpha is in radians right next if you look at r is a bend radius bend radius now t is a thickness of the sheet k is a stretching factor stretching factor stay uh, please k is a stretching factor right stretching factor so generally friends uh, these values will be given in the problem Otherwise, also you can think of generally if R is uh, greater than 2 times thickness, then K will be equal to 0 0.5. If R is less than 2T, K equal to 0 0.33. This point you have to remember. This point you have to remember. But generally, this values, K values, stretching factor values will be given in the problem. Okay? Right. So, we need to find out, friends, uh, what is the bend allowance we need to find out. So, strictly speaking, friends, what is the bend allowance if you look at, if I am bending this particular material, friends, here. So, this is the thickness of this workpiece metal we can consider, right. So, you can consider here. Can you please look at here the bending process if you look at fence here? Yeah, this is the thickness of the sheet material we are going to bend. This is the alpha, and the bend radius is for always friends internal uh, fiber friends. Bend radius we have to consider for internal fibers, internal layer friends. This is bend radius, bend uh, this bend angle alpha. Okay. And you can think of friends, this is a neutral plane we can consider. Neutral plane we can consider here. So, if you are doing bending operation, internal fibers will be compression, top surface fibers will be tension, but along this neutral plane, there is no uh, uh, stress uh, developed here. 
and the bend elements means as simple as that we can say now this bend elements means length of the neutral plane between the bend lines length of the neutral axis between the bend lines will give what bend elements length of the neutral plane between the two bend lines is called what bend elements okay so this point you can observe now if you want to find out the bend elements here friends now here alpha we have to substitute in radians he has given what in degrees so 60 degrees multiplied by pi by 180 we are going to consider this one multiplied by r r is what friends here bend radius is 100 mm uh, plus k stretching factor is already given 0.5 into thickness is what thickness is 3 mm so bend allowance is how much you are getting please check it is here 102 106 right 106 point very good 23 106.23 mm so this you have to remember always alpha will be in radians the radius is for inside radius so bend elements we are going to find out this particular length friends this allowance bend elements length of the neutral axis along this no uh, length of the neutral axis between the bend lines will be given what bend elements okay so with respect to this one friends if this uh, values are not given you can remember this one so here r is greater than 2t so by default is 0 0.5 but is given 0 0.5 so that you can consider stretching factor constant alpha is the bend angle in radians you have to remember i am converting into radians pi by 180 okay right this is a simple equation friends but number of times questions are coming in gate examination now this also friends uh, the bending force also you can easily calculate what is the bending force required so what is the formula friends uh, in bending force calculations we are using bending force force required for bending sorry force required for bending we need to find out so bending force will be equal to k l right sigma ultimate tensile strength t square by w and see here di k is a di opening factor di opening factor now this will be given the problem friends right di opening factor bending force l is length of the bend how much length we are doing bending length of bend length of bend sigma ut means what ultimate tensile strength of the material t is a thickness thickness of the work di is a width of die opening width of die opening width of die opening we have to consider right so you can substitute in this equation friends everything is given uh, k is a die opening factor is 1.33 length is given how much fence uh, length of this bend is given 1 meter that is 1000 mm ultimate tensile strength 500 for steel material thickness is given how much 3 mm t square 3 mm square but w is how much friends 8 times thickness 8 into t is what 3 mm so you can find out this bending force bending force how much bending force please think of how much bending force now this value spends generally they are going to give in this one k die opening factor it will depends on die opening die opening factor width of die opening 8 times thickness uh, is given 8 times thickness 8 times thickness i am going to substitute here yes please tell me what is the answer for this one 249.375 375 kilo newton friends you can divide by 1000 also you can get so these two formulas friends uh, bend allowance and bending force these two equations are very very important you can remember with respect to gate examination okay right right friends uh, this is the uh, application of this uh, process and you know the uh, process you can think of friends the questions uh, practically they are coming like this right please uh, remember forging what is the application of the forging can i say connecting rod where the strength is very high in case of forging connecting rod crane hooks Headed uh, hexagonal bolts, so, right? Uh, these things are produced by forging. So, forging means we can think of friends uh, B, connecting rod. Impact extrusion. 
impact extrusion collapsible tubes soft material collapsible tubes are produced when say in medicine medical application collapsible tubes are produced by this one then rolling or rolling we can say rails are produced by rolling then welding friends we are discussing pressure vessels are produced by what welding pressure vessels are produced by welding submerged arc welding can be used to produce pressure vessels na high thickness uh, pressure vessels so this is option friends here bc da anyone yes please check it here applications friends applications please check it <coughs> next last one friends please look at here now this is a multiple select question friends msq multiple select question this time gate examination we are expecting this type of question friends one uh, please uh, uh, think of this one which of the following defects are correctly matched with their corresponding manufacturing process defect and manufacturing process which is the correct please think of orange peel effect in deep drawing friends due to coarse grain structure a rough surface can be produced right that is called orange peel effect the first statement is correct chevron cracking is taking place extrusion at the center if impurities are packed at the center due to excessive stresses a crack will be formed at the center it is called extrusion you no know, center line cracking or chevron cracking we can consider it is extrusion it is correct arc welding we can say friends undercut a depression because if you start doing welding by using electrical arc if you am doing welding due to electric arc force initially a depression is created a cavity is formed at the beginning of this welding it is called what undercut right this one it is a uh, arc welding it is correct alligatoring is called what rolling no at this uh, please think of here if the rolling operation will be takes place there is a possibility of uh, no bifurcation of the sheet into what two parts at the center due to more stresses this sheet metal is getting deformed like this it is separating it is called alligatoring alligator magar magar opening of this mouth by magar no alligatoring it is rolling all are correct so this is a b c and d all are correct it is a multiple select question okay please think of it yeah now please look at friends here this is correct can you please check it here now with this friends i am going to close the session thank you very much uh, for your cooperation friends sir uh, this only just i have given a brief idea what type of questions are coming how to approach okay so still we required no still you required lot of practice is required so you can continue your preparation without any tension you please don't get tension right you continue the preparation up to this no February 13th or uh, 12th i think uh, i'm sorry 12th 13th you give your best uh, in the examination so god is there to take care of all these things don't get tensed uh, because most of the people at the last end uh, one week or two weeks uh, before that uh, no because of the tension they are going to no uh, lose the hopes and you are not in a position to perform well but please uh, don't do this one up to this what is the preparation you are continuing same preparation you can continue right new topics don't touch now onwards new topics don't touch only you can do some revision formulas you can go through once uh, practice some numerical questions uh, formulas right you can revise the things uh, known things you can revise don't go for new concepts now now onwards okay please revise please revise the things and write try to write some tests so that you can improve your speed and accuracy don't get tensed uh, and you can continue this your uh, preparation up to 12th uh, february relax for day uh, that day don't uh, read anything night you can uh, right do well in no february 13th gate examination okay wish you all the best my dear friends right you can continue your preparation definitely you will get better results don't compare with others don't get tensed don't get tensed so you have taken i think uh, more time i am going to close the session thank you very much wish you all the best best of luck